hello, everyone. Uh, I want to thank you for coming to this very special event in class that we have. We have Andrew Hetherington, uh, who is a friend of mine, a creative contemporary, and a photographer that I have uh, just admired for a long time. And I am so thankful to have him here today with all of us. You know, uh, trying to write an introduction about Andrew's work. You know, I, I know his work so well, and I feel like I've I've kind of grown up with it, you know, kind of in my own paralleling my own kind of career um, that I feel like I know it so well, it's hard to put words to it. But Andrew's photographs are uniquely his. And there really is nothing like an Andrew Hetherington picture story on the pages of a magazine. Um, when you saw it, you knew it was his, it was uniquely his take on the story, and it seemed to be just as important and integral to the story as the writer's words were. Um, and, you know, and that is his work in the editorial realm, although he works in editorial, he works in commercial photography. Um, the, but, you know, his footprint in that editorial world was where I really thought, you know, there was no difference between assignment work and personal work. All of his work kind of seemed to carry the same punch. And I tried to come up with words to describe, you know, his work. And it was simultaneously funny and serious. And then it was, you know, also simultaneously very sincere and also ironic. And then there was just the visual splendor of his images. It was the color and the flash and the tight compositions that seem to kind of reinforce his ideas. All of this stuff coming together in, the, in you know, the single photos and the picture story, it, it really carries a punch. And then amidst all those kind of visual trappings, there is the, um, the people. And no matter who he was photographing, whether it was someone who was famous, someone who was not famous at all and has never been photographed before, Everyone seemed to actually seem to be enjoying the process, or that was my take on it. They seemed to actually like Andrew, and I always got the feeling that Andrew, even for a millisecond, kind of liked these people. And so it was like this combination of elements all together in the photographs that really, I think, made, made his stuff uniquely his. Um, and so with that little introduction, um, I will turn this over to Andrew Hetherington, who is bringing us um, this kind of event that we're calling the best seat in the house. Andrew, thank you. Thanks, Tim. Thank you. Um, and you thought this was about me, but no, Tim Archibald, this is about you. <laughs> <laughs> and let's talk about that best seat in the house. <laughs> oh, that's it. <laughs> uh, we're done here. Thank you, everybody. Um, does everyone know about this? Or is this like still under this, you know, this, has this yeah. disappeared from your biography? <laughs> no, 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 it's there. <laughs> anyway, tre treasure, a treasure, a treasured possession. That's another, that's another <laughs> uh, anyways. Uh, thanks for having me, Tim. Thanks for having me, everybody. Thanks for showing up. Um, yeah. So where do we start? Where do we start? Okay. Well, yeah, I think I'm turning it over to you, and it looks like you have something here. Yeah, and you know what? Why can't I get to the next? Ah, there we go. All right. So I, yeah, there's, yeah, okay. That's my dad on the left, um, and he's the reason I'm a photographer. And he, uh, I'm from Ireland, if you didn't know, grew up in Dublin. He worked for um, Irish television, worked in film, movies. Uh, the ran the gamut but um but he was a cinematographer so that was he was you know he he spent time behind the camera and actually kind of did all the lighting and and uh, so on and so forth so that's that's him on the left he was a he was a cool gentleman he liked his sunglasses this is him in the Aran islands wow off the west oh, these are great Florida. look at that for a boy band look at those guys so he's on the he's on the left um well quite a quite a crew some good hair there too Absolutely. And this, here he is, a little, little older. This is probably, this is, he's probably in his 30s at this stage. Wow. They were doing the behind the scenes photos then even. Well, you know, there would, yeah, I mean, there, yeah, there was a dedicated stills photographer, of course. Right, yeah, as, right. As, as one still has. Yeah. Um, so the gentleman, the gentleman on, in, the, in the center of the frame on the right-hand picture, that is an American director called Joseph Strick. Who won a uh, who won an Academy Award for uh, directing a documentary, and he went to Ireland in the 70s to uh, make a film 
based on James Joyce's portrait of an artist as a young man. And my dad was uh, selected as the um, director of photography. And this was his big, big, big kind of break into, into Hollywood, let's say, um, even though he was working for a national television station. Um, you know, this, 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 this was the big time. And I, I remember, vaguely remember visiting the set as a kid. And that's what my dad would do. He would always take us to the sets, like all the time, like just, you know, whether he was shooting or not, he loved, he loved being around a set and we would, you know, he would, he would, I mean, we couldn't give a shit. Like we were like, really, do we, do we, do we have to go visit? <laughs> but you know, that was kind of, he, he, with everything with my dad, it was like an adventure. So right. whether it sparked something in you, you know, whether, what, you know, whether you wanted to become a cameraman or even an actor or even the, you know, even the caterer, you know, he, I think he looked at all these, you know, uh, oppor these opportunities and, and that is an adventure for him and for, and, and for you. So, so this was his big, big, big like break and he, he could have gone on to Hollywood but we were young kids and he you know he, he kind of he stuck he stuck around home so um, guess which one is me in the middle in the middle of course uh, so of course as kids like my dad took our photographs all the time which we absolutely hated um, and he had a good eye of course and he you know I mean all film and um, but you know I, I had no interest in the uh, uh, career in film at all. And, um, but I, I fancied myself as a bit of a, you know, in sports and fo football or soccer or cycling, but quickly realized that I wasn't very good at any of those and wouldn't be able to make a career out of them. So I did discover though, then that I could use the camera to indulge all these passions, basically. Mm -hmm. So I could be on the sideline, I could be, um, I could be backstage at a gig, mm -hmm. And I joined the camera club um, and my dad, you, you know, he just, he just let me take borrow his camera. It was never, a, you know, he never kind of told me how to use it. He just kind of said, off, you know, kind of like let, let you free and didn't look for it back, you know, yeah. helped, me, helped me build a little dark room in my bedroom. And, you know, yeah. So that's, so that's how, that's kind of how I got started. Wow. Wow. I mean, but when you talk about getting started, was it a hobby or was it just something that was in the house or did you consider yourself a photographer or was it just one of many things you were interested in? Um, well, I mean, I was interested in girls and drinking and cigarettes and all those other, all, you know, and music and fashion and all those things. But the camera was the one thing that actually allowed me to like even beyond sports. Mm. You know, it got me to, it, it got me into parties. It got me. So it, it opened, you know, so really, you know, I had the best seat in the house at, at, right. you know, at, a, at an early age and figured out, you know, I didn't realize that there was a, there might be a career in magazines or anything like that. It was more, again, you know, one just thought you would work with a newspaper because that's all that really that existed at that time. Yeah. So, yeah. So then I just kind of took... I took photos and processed them in the bedroom at home and um, kind of one thing led to another. And yeah, I left, left high school, went to art school for a year. And then, um, you know, and I had dreams of being a fashion photographer and worked in um, various uh, work, assisted various Irish photographers and kind of started off my own, you know, kind of had a, ha had a career of sorts. Mm. But we're going to skip along a little bit because because I could go I could go on forever. So um, I moved to I moved to uh, the U.S. in 1994, I think 94 or 95. Um, most Irish people, a lot of I was in my early 20s. The Irish economy was not great, hadn't been great for a long time, and there was a visa program um, that made it a little easier for Irish people to um, get into the U.S. So. Um, even though I'd had kind of a sort of a career in Ireland, it had kind of fizzled out a little bit. So um, I applied for the visa, got it. Wasn't, you know, it, it wasn't the end of the world if I didn't get it um, and gave myself a year and went, moved to New York. I knew one guy from Ireland who was assisting and just started kind of working my way around and did a little fashion, did a little music, assisted. We're looking kind of 94, 95, 96. Um, and then, you know, there was just so many magazines at that stage that it was, 
it was kind of easy to start <laughs> to start working. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I've always kind of in the beginning, I, 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 you know, one of the things that everyone did everything back then, you did a little music, you did a little portraits, you did a little fashion, but I didn't have a look back then. And I was very much influenced by all the photographers I'd assisted to. So, so it was challenging to kind of make a, to have a voice heard because you'd go to magazines and you'd have a fashion portfolio and a music portfolio, maybe a travel portfolio, but you, but I didn't have a voice and I found that it got lost and people couldn't figure out what it is I did. And I thought I did everything incredibly well, <laughs> of right. course, as right. one does, but, yeah. you know, but again, it was just sending mixed messages and no one could figure out what I did. So, um, you know, the long story short is I was printing at a communal dark room in New York at the time called Print Space. And I ran into a lot of young photographers at the time who were breaking through like a Brian Fink or a Martin Scholler. And I was just, I, I started to see that they had worked on personal projects and they had now turned these projects into editorial assignment, shooting in a similar style to how they had um, executed the personal projects. And, and that kind of intrigued me because I was, ah, so, you know, that's kind of how you, you kind of break through, if that makes any sense. Oh, yeah, for sure. Who do you think you were looking at at the time you came to America, like photographically? Um, nobody. I mean, it, really? would be, it would be in fashion magazines. Yeah, I didn't have oh. a I didn't have a I didn't really have a like, like, honestly, I didn't know who Avedon or Penn or any 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 anybody was. It wasn't part of my photographic education. It didn't really have right. that. It right. was, I knew who Patrick Dermar Chelier was or Peter Lindbergh or, or um, Jürgen Teller. Uh, very much grew up in English style magazine. So, yeah, Nick Knight. And so, mm -hmm. yeah, that was my, that was, but I, you know, I, I probably couldn't have named an American photographer. <laughs> right, right. So you wouldn't have been aware of Martin Parr or anybody who was like uh, in Martin was Martin, yes. Martin was hugely influential. Yes. Mm. And I discovered later on that he actually early in his career spent a lot of time in Ireland, which I wasn't aware of. No, oh, really. Until he had a huge retrospective um, uh, quite a few years ago now in, in, in London. But I, I hadn't been aware that he had spent much of his like formative years in Ireland, which was, right. was a pleasant surprise. Yeah. I met him once. Wasn't exactly. Wasn't. Yeah. We didn't hit it. Yeah, I had a terrible experience meeting Martin Parr once. <laughs> <laughs> oh, phew. I thought I was the only one. That's two of us. Okay. <laughs> Mmm, dish in the dish here. Um, so I was kind of at a turning point in my career. Um, fashion had kind of, uh, it was 2001 and the magazine world, like everything just got turned on its head. Anyone who, who, who was involved in editorial photography at that time will, will, um, will back me up on that. Um, all of a sudden there was budgets and no budgets and magazines disappeared. And, and I was kind of forced to be like, well, what is it? What do I do? What do I like to do? Who am I? Um, and again, being in this dark room and seeing, seeing this work and, and meeting these photographers, it was like, it was like going to college, like Mark two, mm -hmm. although assisting had been Mark, maybe it was Mark three or Mark, any, anyway, it was, it was, but um, I realized that I needed a project too. And, um, you know, I, I have done personal projects, um, but nothing, you know, it was more like test shoots, re really our fashion shoots. Or, um, so I kind of got back to Ireland and I revisited a small town that we used to go to as kids with my dad and my mom and my brothers. And I kind of just felt that there was a project there. It just seemed right. I took a few pictures, took them, took them back to New York and, and at that stage, I was, I, I was, I'd always been interested in lighting things. I always been interested in flash a la Martin Parr. Um, I'd always been interested in color. Um, and I always was, I always been interested in a bit of quality. So I liked a bit of medium format. Um, and, you know, and then all of, you know, there was pocket wizards and now there was things that allowed you to, you know, to kind of, kind of work um, with flash outdoors, with small batteries and stuff. Not, not that it was game changing by any means, but, but I, again, it was like, cause I always liked a bit of everything. I liked a portrait. I liked a landscape. I liked, let's say reportage. I liked to capture a moment. I liked inside and outside. So, so this project, uh, which became, which I call made in Ireland was shot around this village for about, I've spent about 10 days. My father had a small river boat that I stayed on with him. And every day I would just go out and 
take photographs and and this is this was Jim who owned the shop and the pub in the background and he basically everyone everyone in town knew Jim and Jim knew everyone so if Jim gave you the all clear you were you you, you were good so um, so yeah so I just I just kind of started and kind of one thing one thing kind of led 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 to another oh wow so this is all film Hasselblad uh, sixty mil with a with a Q flash oh right right. So the idea, though, was you needed a body of work and you went home rather than do it in New York. Um, well, when I went home, I found it. If that makes any sense. I was like, "Ooh, yeah. this is kind of interesting. This is this is um, it was hard to put my finger on it. I, I knew I just knew having revisited this place. It might have been, you know, 15 years since I've been there previously, even longer. And. At that time, Ireland was going through tremendous change and this village hadn't changed much. And that was kind of the key, I think. Um, and just, just it, 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 again, having spent a lot of my years as a kid there, there was just, some, there was just something that kind of made perfect sense um, to go back and... Oh, these are great. So this wasn't the first project, but this was the first project that you felt was really yours. You know what I mean? Or had your stamp on it? Um, yes. Yeah. Because I, I now realized what I wanted to do as well. Uh, you know, I wasn't a fashion photographer. I wasn't a music photographer. But this, I was like, because again, also the, the magazine landscape was changing a little bit in terms of um, interesting kind of wacky stories you know it wasn't so much yeah. national geographic anymore it was like oh let's go to you know nathaniel welsh going to spring break and it was just it just seemed like this was the way to again it mixed everything i liked but yeah. yet it was done in a way that it, it you know again it was hard in the beginning to when i did start to get assignments to to not bring the baggage of my previous assignments with me and bring a ton of gear, you know, like I had to, at the time I, I'd been working with Platon a lot as an assistant and he mentored me and he's like, you know, when you go on a job, just do this, you know, don't like, this is what you do now. And I said, well, how do you, you know, how do you, how do you find those moments? He's like, well, you know, just if you're going to let's, let's, let's take, for example, take this image here. He said, well, if you're going to photograph someone who has a cup of tea next and put the tea in their hand, you know, it was kind of, you know, August Sander esque, but I didn't. I didn't know who August Sander was. At the yeah. time either, you know. Yeah. But it it was a way of kind of like, um, you know, finding these. I, I just wanted to find these moments, be able to, you know, either they were perfect and I could grab them, or I could finesse them a little bit. You know, that brought yeah. out some of the personality, uh, you know, the subject's personality. You know, and oh, it was, yeah. And I've always found, you know, it's it's come, you know. I mean, this shot I remember clearly because. This is actually Jim's brother, John. And, you know, I could hear him clipping the grass 100 meters away. And I walked up and he was like immaculate because he was going out for dinner with the family, you know. And you're like, oh, that's, you know, that's it. You know, it's the, yes. it's the, uh, it's the clippers, you know. Oh, well, everything in the way he's dressed and the yeah. shortness of his tie yeah. and then the shapes. Yeah, and those hands oh. as well, because he's just, you know, he's worked his whole, his whole life. So, I mean, your work, though, at this time, it wasn't documentary photography, right? It was, it no. had the style to it that was like kind of the dominant thing, don't you think? Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I, I wouldn't think of myself as a documentary photographer at, at all. Never, 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 never have. Oh, that's great. So... Yeah, this is probably the most famous photograph I've ever, <laughs> ever taken. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so this was taken on the last morning and um, and it was just a, a, like a throwaway shot. And I had the strobe with me and the sky behind the cow was, uh, it was foggy. So it was basically, you know, it almost feels like a seamless. And, um, you know, and, and I would shoot some Polaroids just to make sure I was in the, I was in the um, the zone, you know, with the yeah. ratios and whatnot. Um, can't remember if I did this time, but again, just kind of, I, I, it might have been the last frame on the roll, um, and um, just took it and clicked it and kept walking around. And twenty minutes later, the the sun had risen and burnt away the the fog. So it was a it would have been a totally a totally different scene. And and I got back to the lab and started 
you know, I didn't know if I had anything. And I, and the great thing about the lab was you would do your prints and you put them up on the wall, you know, as you, you judge them and, 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 you know, got your color right. And as I started to put, you know, the pictures on the wall, well, then I would get comments from my peers and they were positive. And you're like, okay, now, now I, you know, in the, yeah. and it was very honest and very true and very real, you know, it, it, so you kind of, you kind of knew. And um, yeah. And, and this picture I printed, I didn't really think, I didn't really think much of it. Um, but then that year I made it into PDN's 30 and this picture made the cover. Um, so I'm not sure if everyone's aware of what PDN 30 is, but. It's still, oh yeah, PDN isn't even going anymore. It's gone. Yep. It's gone. Yep. <laughs> Breaking news. Anyway, that's gone a while. But um, so this was huge because because now I had had quite you know I this is two thousand and three, you know I let's say I'd had an eight year career through assisting and through shooting. Realized it was a huge moment. You know I didn't even have a website. There was no when people were looking for talent, they looked at you know the competitions. They looked at PDN thirty. There was no Instagram. There was no, you know, this is how yeah. you found talent. Um, so I realized like this was a big opportunity and, and I went out of my way then to promote it. And I started to get the work then that, that, that I had been interested in, which was, you know, portraits and kind of funky, wacky editorial stories and so on and so forth. Uh, no, an exciting time. So what year is this again? I'm looking this at the magazine. 2003. 2003. Yeah. So the New York that you described sounds like it was really influential. You talk about people who you assisted, who were, who were giving you guidance and mentorship. And then you talk about people at print space who were like chiming in with others. Now, the perception from others that I have of New York at that time was that it was a much more cutthroat thing. And do you have any thoughts on that? It, was that all a fiction or was it just you or, you know, how do you view I, I i think you know i think there's always there's always been a strong community and i think it just depends where you fall into that and what maybe maybe the genre of photography yeah. you know wh when i worked as an assistant um you know the best thing was dropping off the film at the lab at night because you would meet other assistants and that's how you started yeah. to network and yeah. then when the rental studios became a big thing you know you would run into other assistants at the coffee bar and you would network and you would figure out you know so i mean cutthroat <laughs> I, I don't know. I can't, I honestly can't. I, I think the, you know, I think, I think the business might be cutthroat. Are, are you saying the business or are you, you kind of individuals or like, I've, I've never, I've never, I've always found people to be incredibly helpful. Yeah. Yeah. Know. No, I think it was New York in particular that had that reputation. You know what I mean? To me. And maybe it's just because I was an outsider in San Francisco that in, in San Francisco, I viewed it to be a very generous community, you know, and helpful yeah. community. So eh, maybe it was fiction, you know, that I had, you know, an well, urban legend. Well, you're, uh, yeah, well, you're outside, you're San, you know, West Coaster, you know, so, <laughs> I, don't, yeah. I don't know. I mean, everything's harder. Yeah, in I mean, it was certainly it was certainly, um, it was certainly competitive, of yeah. course. I would yeah. I would, you know, but I think also there was there was a lot of work, you know. Right. Um, like the first time I kind of realized it was I used to shoot for Mademoiselle magazine, which was a yeah. uh, young fa it was a fashion magazine. But and 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 there were, there were there were magazines where you would get a break as a young photographer and shoot well stories and stuff. And then I, I do recall like September 11th happened. And then all of a sudden, like real A-list fashion photographers Oh, we're yeah. now shooting for the magazine, that magazine, you know, whichever was oh, yeah. left. So that, yeah. then I kind of noticed a shift too. It's like, you know, but I've also always realized, you know, I've always kind of had a, a, a knack of, you know, knowing when, you know, I'm not going to be the, I'm not going to be Stephen Mizell, you know, right. like, like it's, it's, I'm not going to be. So it's, you know, uh, I don't know. Well, I don't know oh, where no. I'm going there, but. It's yeah, like, no, no, I know where you're like going. I'm never, going to be a, I'm never going to be a soccer player, so do, so, do something else. <laughs> well, no, I, I, yeah, I mean, someone did once tell me that it really helps when you can see, uh, give an honest view about your role in, like, where you fit in the kind of game that you're playing. And then it can kind of help you figure out where you fit in and where, where to hit the accelerator and when to pull back. And, no, I think that's honest, honestly. Yeah. Um. So this is me on the right, and that's my brother Richard on the left. My dad took this picture. Um, so he took this picture, and that's on the left is the boat we had at the time. And that's the river, and that's the village that I was in for the project. And 
obviously I caught a fish, so I'm, I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy. I'm pretty stoked about it. Um, but I, you know, as, and I hope this comes out in this is, is that, you know, when you're young, you know, life is, you know, I, I've had this incredibly circular life where stories have come full circle. And, um, little did I know that 20 odd years later that I would photograph my dad in exactly the same. Position. Oh, that's great. Almost like almost to a T, maybe, maybe 30 feet away. So I didn't know, I had forgotten that the photograph of me existed on the left. And I was probably, do you remember when I came to San Francisco and did a talk at the Apple? Oh, yeah. So yeah, yeah I put absolutely. together and I, I'd asked my dad to send me some pictures and he'd sent me this one on the left. And I was like, fuck, like, you know, like who would have thought, you know, like I would never have thought as that kid, you know, that A, I was going to be a photographer. I had no You're idea right. at that time. B, I would live in New York. C, I would work for magazines. D, I would come back to this village 30 years later and photograph my dad on the dock that he photographed me on 30 years previously. Yeah, yeah. So, That's great. Uh, and little did I realize at the time until afterwards, he was like, you know, look at his outfit. He's got the stripy socks. He's got the stripy shirt. Like, you know, everything, you know, <laughs> kind of worked out. So that was, you know, so, so, so yeah, that was... I, I don't know. It's, it's hard to it, it's hard to fathom as a kid or as a teenager or in your 20s, you know, I mean, hopefully. Yeah, you just you, you, you just never fucking know, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. So I'm, I'm skipping around a little bit because I don't want to I don't want to bore everyone to death. But this is my this is my dad, um, Stuart. So he came to visit me um, in New York in this is in 2016. And I kind of thought about doing projects with him already, you know, just try to figure out something, but I just couldn't come up with that thing. And, you know, TA, we, we, we kind of mentioned it a little bit. Like, I enjoy doing projects. I love doing assignments. Mm -hmm. because you give me an assignment. You tell me, you, you lay it out. You send me somewhere. You give me a name. And I love figuring it out. So when you're doing a project, it's like, ah, you know, yeah. where do you start? Where, you know, so, so, but I need that little, I, I, I need to have something. I need to have a reason to take the photograph. Yeah. Um, I struggle when it's like a, just a portrait of someone on a white background. Cause it's like, what's, what's the reason for that? You know, why are we, why are we here? So I always, and, and once, even if it, even if it doesn't like come to fruition, I just need to have somewhere to start. And then I'm, then I'm good. And then I usually, you know, but I, I have to justify it in my own head, even if it's a commission, like right. what's, what's, what is it I'm doing and why am I here? And why are they just on white? Yeah. <laughs> um, so my dad shows up at the airport and he shows up with these fucking sunglasses and they're like, just crazy. They've got all that. They're fake. They've got Chanel logos and Versace and Gucci. Yeah. And, and I, I literally, we're in the car service coming in from JFK and I literally took this picture on the phone and posted it to Instagram and everyone just like freaked the fuck out. They're like, no, totally. And I was like, you know, it's the fucking glasses, you know, just, just it's, it's the glasses. So we, we, he was, I think he was over for about two weeks and we had trips and stuff planned. And, and um, the next, the next day we went to, we did the touristy things and we went downtown Um to the world trade and you know i i brought the camera with me yeah you know not just not the phone i brought the camera I was like yeah you know what maybe maybe there's maybe there's something in this you know yeah um so later that day we went now no one's ever seen this one because he's not wearing the glasses um later in the day we went to the the museum of the Mu moving image out in queens and um and he wouldn't put the glasses on and I'm like, Dad, you gotta, you gotta, you know, gotta put it. But we're we're like sneaking around too, like trying not to get thrown out as well. <laughs> yeah. At the same time, but um, but this is this is like he's just arrived the night before. We're out the next day. It's like you know what's what are we you know is this something is it nothing, um, you know no glasses, you know. And I I just have an on camera flash and uh, yeah that that's about it. Um, but then I persuade him to put the glasses on. I was like, you know what? It's, it's the glasses. <laughs> it's the, it's the thing that kind of made it for me. Yeah. Um, 
in, you know, like whatever. I, there was just something, there was just something about them. That, now the story of the glasses is that they weren't his glasses. He was, he couldn't find his glasses when he was coming over on the plane. He grabbed whatever, I don't know where he got these from, but, um, but as you can tell from earlier photographs, he definitely, he definitely enjoyed a good sunglass. <laughs> he did, no, from when yeah. he was young. Very stylish, very stylish, yeah. So what happened then was I started to post these pictures um, on my Instagram every day, and it just grew into this thing. Like, it just became a thing all of a sudden. And, yeah. and dadcation was born for whatever. It just, seemed to, it just seemed to make sense, so. Oh, yeah. And, you know, we, we just had a big adventure. I mean, the, the thing, too, was that, that um, it, I, this sounds awful, but it gave us something to do. It gave us a little oh, yeah. project every day. Anyone who's spent time with a parent <laughs> yeah. will appreciate. And anyone who's, you know, parent is staying with them for two weeks. <laughs> you know, it, it can, you know, it can. It, it. So, so we had this little project and it also became a thing because I was posting every day. And then people were getting in touch with him from all over and his friends and family were like, oh, you're having a great fucking time. Look at you. And it just became this thing, you know, in our world. And yeah. um, it became really special, really, really, really quickly. But, you know, we pushed ourselves then each day to, you know, come up with come up with stuff, you know. So he was as in on this as you were. He knew why you liked these images. Um. Yes, yes, yeah. I think he enjoyed the challenge then too, as well. You know, of 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 um, what are we going to do today? You know, he was he's yeah. very patient as well. You know, he he trusted me. You know, there there is a degree yeah. of you know, <laughs> you know. I mean, he he got it. I think the I think the instant response was something special too for him. Right. Right. Yeah. Oh, it's like a game you guys are playing together for sure. Yeah, and he hadn't and he hadn't experienced anything like like that before you know and, and right. so, so um so um again having you know this is this is uh this is my dad with uh, george eastman at the coda the eastman house in rochester where my wife's family was from so we, we visited there and we went to the eastman house um so you know it was also it was also you know we were going to do the eastman house anyway if that makes any, if yeah. that makes sense um oh yeah here he is in the garden of the eastman house and and stylistically, we kind of we kind of wore the same, we wore the same clothes and stuff, just kind of kind of ironically. And here we are at Kodak HQ, and he had an uncanny knack of wearing the right shirt, like for whatever day. You know? Oh yeah. Um. So um, yeah, there's not much left of Kodak, but you know, again, who would have who would have thought as a kid? You know, I remember him taking me to Kodak Ireland, you know, and picking up film stock and you know. Being like, fuck dad, can you get a move on? You know? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But he was game, he was game for anything. Uh, oh, these are great. So, how do you think the sunglasses transformed him, though? You know what I mean? Like, or for you, what what did you like about that? Um interesting question. <laughs> I think I think I think, you know. Lots of people, lots of photographers have photographed their parents. Yeah. And I was like, so, you know, long story short, my father had, has had challenging health issues. He was diabetic. And I, you know, I didn't feel like I wanted, I wanted that sort of a shoot, you know, like, or, or to, you know what I mean? Like I, I wanted something to be fun yeah. or to have fun. And I think the glasses helped unlock that because, because they were just that thing that was fun and they were kind of wacky and it, it just like, you know, it just gave him this rock star persona, let's say. Yeah, it kind and, of made him iconic in a Lone Ranger-ish type of way or something like that. But, but when you look at the black and white pictures, he was kind of iconic, stylish in that way with the glasses <laughs> too, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Again, it's like kind of a, now, let's say he didn't wear those glasses. Well, then, you know, would it have happened? Probably it would have probably been the pictures I showed just showed without the glasses. And what would that have been? Uh, I don't know if they would have been failures, but they would have been less immediate or something like that. You well, know? yeah. And I think I, and I've never, I've never shown those pictures before because he's not wearing the glasses because it just, they just make no sense in the grand context of, 
things. And he got it right away too. He was like, do I have to wear the glasses? And then, and then after like day two, he's like, yeah, I got to wear the glasses, right? You know, there was no, you know. Oh, no discussing it. And there was no debating it. It was a oh, given. This is it, was, it was a given. Oh yeah, it was, yeah. It was like, you know, it, it, was a to- it was a total given. Yeah. Uh, because I think, again, it just added to the, it added to the, um, I don't know, the, but the, you know, yeah, we were having fun. We were having a good time. Like we yeah. didn't really care what anyone else thought. But you know, obviously, it, obviously, it's nice when people are like, "Yeah, hey, this looks, you know, this is fucking cool." Yeah. And you know, the other thing then too is that, I, I mean, it's got a lot easier now because everyone has a phone and everything. But I'm sure TA, like you'll remember, like there was times, and certainly when I did like the Made in Ireland project and you do some jobs, like people were very, very like, what are you doing? What are you like, you're taking a picture? What's, what are you using that for? You know, like there was, there was a period of that. I mean, I did have to deal with it in that Made in Ireland. There was a lot of suspicion too, that I was, you know, making money out of those photographs, you know? Right, right, right. You know, as we've, oh, well, finish your thought. And then there's some questions that have come in that it's probably a good time for us to, to throw them at you. But, again, but then I kind of realized, too, that, you know, like, no one's going to stop us, me and my right. dad. Like, what are you going to say? You know, yeah. no, you can't. Yeah. Well, like, it's my dad, you know, which was which was kind of which was kind of great because, you know, then we just did did what, you know, because I still had the big flash on the on the camera. So it's not exactly the phone, you know. Right. So right. Oh, it looks more intentional and it looks yeah. more like you're doing something. But yeah. it's, again, a kid photographing his dad, you know, but two adults. Mm hmm. The, um, let me share some of these questions with you because they are kind of about, you know, where we're at, you know, looking at th- this project here. Um, from Mari, Mark, uh, Mari, a uh, grad student, she said, did the glasses give him a sense of anonymity as if he could hide behind them? Well, you know, in a weird way that maybe gets back to, and this is, so I was terribly shy as a child. Mm-hmm. And I think on the, I've, always, I've always hidden behind the camera. So the I've always hidden me on it. I don't I, anonymity. I don't think it gave him an anonymity because, in a weird way, like all eyes were on him. Yeah, yeah. certainly. Certainly, when I took the camera out, then it was like, "Who's that guy? Who's that guy?" <laughs> Even if it's just for a split second, you know. Because right. again, the the photographs are you know they're all thoughtful to a degree. I'm I'm sure the girl in the background there is like like who's yeah who's who's that guy? Like he does kind of look like he should be famous, right? Oh, there could be someone famous there. Yeah. yeah. No, I like that a lot. Um, someone here is uh, uh, Stanley Phillips has a question. He says, it seems as though you don't like projects that are conceived, but are spon- but you like ones that are spontaneous. And would you uh, see and build with, would that be a true state? Oh, that are spontaneous and build. Would yeah, fluid. that be fluid? Oh, and fluid. Would that be a true statement? And you, and you say that you dislike projects. Have you tried, uh, Stanley? You want to clarify? Yeah, it just seems like this this turned into a project. Like you say, you dislike mm-hmm. projects, but this turned into a project, and it's almost as if you like doing these pro. What end up being, you know, for specifications, uh, a project, but they're very spontaneous and very fluid because you saw the moment and you went with the moment, and then it ended up turning into a. A fluid I think, project. I think it's if I, I think, yeah, I think it's when like, the idea is good and it hits. Like, like we've all done projects that we think is a good idea and we do it. It's shit. Yeah. Right? So like, so then when it hits, you kind of know it hits, you know, I mean, I, I've always equated to like, like in a weird way, Made in Ireland was my first album, you know, so you put all the hits in there. Like I had some really bad like second and third albums. Like they yeah. didn't, you know, they, they didn't even get released. <laughs> um so you know and and yeah i mean i think we're but i think it helps when there's maybe a connection or there's a reason again i need i need i need something more than just showing up you know but i did have some minor hits and some you know it, yeah it just it's just some some sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't work and some you know the nice thing about a job let's say is a shoot is if it doesn't work you just move on and hopefully oh, yeah. hopefully you get another one <laughs> yeah yeah but you know and, and you don't dwell on it 
you know, it, like there's yeah. nothing like when you're working a lot and you shit and you have a shit shoot and then you're like, fuck. And you, you know, I mean, you, you do feel bad, but if you're shooting the next day and you have a better day, you know, that shoot gets uh, on your own project, you know, it can be a head fuck, right? Absolutely. I mean, totally. So, you know, I've got a willing, so I've got someone who's willing, you know, and I, I'm at my best when it just kind of happens and I've got people who play along and I see things, um, you know, um, but again, you know, I mean, I'm also, you, you know, there's, there, there's pictures I would see though, that might, you know, might be challenging for him physically that I wouldn't push on him. You know, so it's, it's kind of this, this, you know, yes. And, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm always, I guess, you know, one of the other things too on an editorial or commercial assignment is if I have an idea or an idea comes to me, I always ask, you know, and if they, if the subject says, no, that's fine, because then I've asked. And yeah. like, but sometimes then it starts a dialogue where they come up with something better that you didn't, you didn't think of, but I always hated, and I did it a lot early on. Cause you just, I just didn't, you know, because it takes a while to build confidence and to, to you know, yeah. be like, well, um, you know, God, I wish I'd asked them if they do that, you know, and I, I, and it was gone the moment, like it was gone. Like I've gone, I've driven from the shoot. So I've learned, yeah. I've learned to ask and always give them the, the opt out, but then sometimes, but also, you, you know, I mean, if you, you too true of a job when you show up and if someone isn't, you know, you kind of know after a while what you can push and what you can't push. And, oh uh, yeah. You have instincts in terms of what's going to fly and what's not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, what is this? How did this happen? You know, shit just happens, man. <laughs> um, so, do you want to answer or you want to just let this be? So, well, it's, it's you know, I, I guess because it's all right. Well, so this photo is based on real events. So we went to we went to the tennis out in Flushing, the US Open, and it was hot as fuck, like super, super hot. And, you know, he wasn't doing you know, it wasn't, he, he wasn't having a great day. Let's put it that way. Yeah. And you're like, and you know, you, you go, let's say you go into this and I'm like, Oh man, there's going to be all these fucking shots and we're going to do this and that. And, and again, it's my dad. Who's going to stop, you know, who's going to stop us. Um, right. And you know, it was just like, I realized then quickly that nothing was, we weren't going to be traipsing around. Like it wasn't going to be, a, I'm, I, you know, my little voice is, Oh, this is going to be a shit photo day. You know, right. I put pressure on myself to, so we're sitting in our seats and then I see the Jumbotron fan camera come on and I'm like, ah, that's it. There you go. So I took a photograph from the seat. And my, this one might've slipped on the screen. But, and that was it. That's all I needed. I knew, right. I knew that again, it's, it's, um, I wouldn't say it's, 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 maybe it's not problem solving. Maybe it's challenge solving. And that's what you really learn in editorial photography is how to mm -hmm. make something out of nothing or to be like, you know, because there's always expectation. And, and certainly in the early days, you know, before Google Earth or Google Maps or any way, like you would show up like, to, like at a location with no idea what it looked like or who you were photographing. And, and now, of course, you know, you, you can see who you're photographing and so on and so forth. But I do remember so many times of having this built this picture in my head of the location or the person I would be photographing only to get there. And they were like, <laughs> like the reality didn't exist or the great, or sometimes you would have the story, like the writer would have written the story and you get the story and you're like, Oh, this sounds great. This location sounds epic. And you pull up and it's like, you know, what did they, what did they, there's no storm clouds rolling over that. You know I mean? It's, it's so, oh, yeah. So, um, so that is one of the things I've loved about, I do love about editorial photography is, 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 is trying to solve problems or just, you know, working with what you got. So yeah, work with what you got. No, well stated. Um, also my dad can't swim. So this was, um, we, we went to a friend of ours, uh, friends of ours out, out in New Jersey, they have a lake house and, um, um, like we both knew that, like I saw the canoe, <laughs> we both knew that that was going to be the, that was going to be the shot that day. <laughs> yeah. Um, he reluctantly, he reluctantly agreed. And Brett, who might be on here, Brett it, it, it is a producer and he is, it's his canoe and he is like slightly off frame just in case the canoe topples over. Oh, seriously. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. Oh man. 
So all through this, then, you know, this was the great thing. People started to get in touch with us um, and, you know, just reach out. And this is a, a photographer, Dirk, Dirk Anschutz, friend of mine who I'd met at Prince Space. Yeah. And he got in touch and he was actually working on a project of fathers and sons. And he asked if he could photograph us and he photographed my dad. And of course, I photographed him photographing my dad. Um, and then, like, I had a few shoots before he went back to Ireland. So he would come on shoots with me. He would be the stand in. Oh, these are great. So then um, a dear friend of mine, um, photographer Joe Pugliese, who you should have on this, uh, on this uh, show next season. Um, he is LA based, but he was in New York shooting at the Condé Nast um, studios. And he invited us to come along and he had asked to take our photographs. So, so of course we got the full treatment. Oh, that's great. There's Joe and my dad. Oh man. These are the pictures that Joe took of us. So that, that you know, if you know a good photographer, <laughs> get them to take your picture. <laughs> oh, that is so crazy. That is so crazy. <laughs> wow. So the, I, I just treasure these. These are beyond, like just beyond, you know. Oh, for there's, sure. There's no, there's no words. That's the best, that's the keeper. Um, Oh, that, that shows you what a great photographer Joe is. Uh, yeah, it's beautiful. There's a couple of questions that would be good to throw out to you right now. Um, if you are in the mood. I'm in the uh, mood. From uh, Ofer, a uh, grad student here, he said, the photos are almost too perfect, so well lit. The color is so digital camera-ish 2020, 2020s without tint. The dynamic range between lit and dark areas are well balanced like an HDR function. With these facts in mind, I know I'm not supposed to ask this, but still one, question one, what the F were you using gear-wise, camera and flash-wise? And two, was there any post-production done in the dark or light room? That's a fair question. That's a fair question. Um, so I am not a very technically minded photographer. Uh, yeah. It's not it's not important to me. What is important to me is capturing the moment. But yet, at the same time, you know, if we go back to the Made in Ireland pictures, there was a definite idea about how I wanted to do it um, and I needed it to work. And I figured, you know, I, I figured it I figured it out. Um, you know, it was always a fixed lens. It was always the Q flash on the stand or I had someone hold it. And it was pretty it was pretty straightforward. Um, and I printed or had printed the dark. There was very little post. There was no post actually back back then. Whatever whatever it could manage in the dark room. Um, the switch to digital was was quite traumatic um, because again I just couldn't figure it out. And I, I I I'd liked the square because you didn't have to choose vertical or horizontal. Oh yeah. <laughs> and I also liked I used to use a waist level finder for a lot of stuff. And I liked the fact that the head dipped and you were coming at a slightly lower angle. So it just kind of, it, 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 there was just something about it that was kind of um, uh, non-confrontational. It was just very, yeah. you know, it was just so, but then, you know, like, then, then, you know, trends change too. So you start looking at things and getting influenced. And, and, and then also with the, with the film, I started to use two flashes then. So I had like an on-axis and an off-axis. Um, and this, the switch to digital was, was, was tricky, but um, I started off with on-camera Canon, and then I would, I would have Q flash off-camera. for all, So all these pictures with my dad, it's on-camera flash, that's it, um, or daylight, because that's just all I had. I, I didn't want to complicate it with an extra light. Plus, we're, I don't want to draw, you know, we're already drawing attention to ourselves. So how much, how much more attention? And, you know, and I don't want to drive him fucking crazy either. <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah. hang on, let's get the light up. Um, <laughs> so I mean, yeah, you know, so there's not much, there's this, there's fuck all on any of this. So, I mean, um, to be honest, not much, I, I would yeah. probably reprocess the images again and see, I don't know how you, I, I mean, it's an interesting, it's, in, it's, it's, it's a fascinating, like over time, it's like, you know, you would go into the dark room, let's say with a negative and print it a few years later, you'd print it completely differently. Yeah. You know, yeah and, and same with processing. Like now I, you know, I've learned a few tricks. Like it's not like I don't do a lot of posts, but I've, you know, 
I, I, again, again, I just want to be able to capture the image in the way I want to I'm not get bogged down in 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 um, in the um, in the technicality of the you know I hate to miss anything. I guess is the yeah. right. Yeah. No, that's a good question. Uh, another good answer to a question. Another question here uh, from Eddie, uh, another graduate student. He says, "I find it interesting to see the evolution of your style over time. How would you say your process of evolving with time works?" I feel that some photographers manage to keep changing their style, evolving with the changes in equipment and remaining uh, diverse. How do you stay current and fresh as time goes on and you're constantly evolving? Mm. Um, you know, what's current and fresh? Who decides what's current and fresh? Hmm. Interesting. You know, I, I mean, you know, people would say, oh, you're still doing the same fucking thing. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Like, in a, in a weird way, like, it's, it's, yeah. I, I don't know. Can we have the question again? That was, that was, that was deep, deep question. Yeah, no, it was, it was elaborate, but I think it was, uh, let's say, he goes, uh, the, the student Eddie is, is deep. Um, I find it interesting to see the evolution of your style over time. Got it. How would you say your process of evolving with the time, uh, evolving with time works? I feel that some photographers manage to keep changing their style, evolving with the changes in equipment and remaining diverse. Right. How do you stay current and fresh as time goes on, constantly evolving? And Eddie, chime in if you want to clarify anything yeah. there um, that but I, I can read. But I think I think because in my early days, and I haven't showed any of the like we could be here all day or night. Um, I was so influenced by so many people in the early days, and I was so all over the place, you know, like all over, like I would use different camera, and that was kind of the way the business was. You used a different camera for a different job, and it was just like it was just fucking all over the place, you know. It just mm -hmm. wasn't it wasn't consistent, right? Um, and I think the lighting helped to, to, to make things consistent, obviously, and the subject matter. Um, but I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the current thing is, you know, we could get into a whole thing about that because again, some people would, might argue that, you know, like I'm so out of date that it's not, you know, that I'm not current, but thanks Eddie though. If you still think I'm current, I appreciate, appreciate that. <laughs> I took it as a compliment. I took it as a positive. Yeah. Oh, I'm taking it. As, I'm, I am taking it as a positive because, again, yeah, fads and trends. You know, it's like I, I, I do use the music, musical. Like, you know, I'm not a U2 fan, but they have had a, a career. You know, like how many one-hit wonders, you know, have there been? Same in photography too. You know, you see a magazine story and you're like, oh wow, that's fucking great, and then you never see the name ever again, kind of thing. You know? Oh so yeah. It's um. Yeah, how to stay current. I, I I guess it's just to be interested. Like to so like like you know, I mean the crazy thing is, and I'm not gonna show anything like like I'm shooting more daylight now. Like I'm into day, I'm into daylight all of a sudden. Oh, natural <laughs> what's light. What's happening to me? <laughs> yeah. Um, but I yeah, maybe you know, maybe that's maybe that's the the of um, of evolvement. So so um, dadcation was in 2017 and my father went back to Ireland like a new man. Like he literally, like we had a brilliant time and, you know, he gets back to his partner and family and they're like, fuck, like, you know, he had, we had a fucking great time, you know, and he was famous. So, you know, um, um, and, you know, I'm not naive to the fact either that, you know, I am a, a working commercial editorial photographer. So, anything I put out, you know, I hope it resonates as well. You know, I'm, I'm doing oh, yeah. this for me, of course, first. And then, you know, but, but I'm also, I can also, I also see the opportunities, um, right. you know, in, in, in something like this. So uh, this is Christmas 2017. So at this stage, the glasses had become iconic and he had kept the, kept, he got a little case now for the, for the glasses and yeah. kept them in a special place in his house. So this was, this was uh, this was Christmas 2017, yeah. Um, so um, so yeah, we decided we needed to do Dadcation two then, <laughs> and um, he came back. Wow. So this is this is 20, 2017. 
uh, October 2017. Um, this is me picking him up at JFK. Now he's like bona fide a rock, rock star. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's 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 the Cadillac SUV now at the airport. Not the, yeah. not the Toyota Corolla. Um, and I had decided he, for someone who had a life in film, he had never been to Los Angeles. And I was like, you know what? We got to go to LA. And he was totally on board with that. Mm. So um, this, I, I, you know, I owe a lot of gratitude to Michael Wichita at AARP, who's a photo director there. And um, he helped us put this, this part of the project together. Um, and we posted on the AARP Instagram feed than daily as opposed as opposed to my feed. Right. Um, so this was this was all of a sudden different because now it was like a job. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Even though expectation was was minimal, you know, it's there's still expectation, of course, you know. And right. and again, now we, we've had the successful first album. Now we've got the follow-up, which is, you know, which is kind of tricky. I mean, it is 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 definitely, definitely challenging. Um, so we got off the plane and we went to Randy's and I, I have to say, you know, for the first day, you know, we kind of struggled a bit, you know, both of us struggled a bit. Um, you know, we, we had a conversation at one point. It's like, are we doing enough? Because we felt ob like, I do always feel too, like, am I, am I doing enough? You know, like for a client or like, am I giving them enough? Is, is there like. Because I, I think too, you look at your own work and you're just like not sure right. a lot of the time. Right. Um, and when it's happening, especially you're like, is this like, is this okay? Um, and I've always had lots of self doubt, but it, I, I, I managed to channel that into, you know, to, to, to push harder or work harder or not settle. Um, but it does keep you up awake at night. And, you know, he's a creative too. So he totally, he's like, are we, you know, we, you know again, because like, you don't want to take the same shots again. Um, and people are expecting now, you know, the first time it was all a big surprise. And now it's like, oh, you know, what are you guys going to do this time? How are you going to top that? Right. So we, we struggled for the first day or two in, in all, in all seriousness and, and, and had conversations about it. <laughs> we were both feeling the same thing. So I mean, is, is he getting a feeling that it wasn't as fun as the first time? Or what was his, like, where's he coming from with this? Well, I think we were both feeling it. It wasn't fun yet, you know? You know what I mean? Right. Like, we were like, but we figured out, so we were on the pier at Santa Monica, and, you know, he'd had the bucket hat from, from you know, Dadcation 1, and it looked a little tired, you know? It just looked a little fucking, you know, it just didn't look sharp. So we bought a new hat. So the hat then became the thing on top of the glasses. Oh, nice. Nice. You know, it just, so, so, so that's what, that's what got us back on track. Was yeah. The hat. Yeah. It just, it was just, it was like a revelation, you know, yeah. it was like that, that thing. It was like, it's like, we need to freshen it up a little bit and it's just going to, it's not going to take much, you know, it's just going to take, yeah. and then we were off to the races. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's great. So all, all of a sudden, you know, you, we're gone from we're gone from this to this to this. Oh yeah, it's more sophisticated. It's more LA. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I'm I like we're both like yeah. I mean, it just took that little thing to make to make to to make a difference. And again, we were fit. I can't remember how many. I mean, we probably did two or maybe three posts a day. Like we we're definitely feeling. You know, it was it was it was pressure. It wasn't all like because I didn't want to let we didn't want to I didn't want to let Michael down, and my dad didn't want to let Michael down. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Didn't want to, you know, and 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 as I said, you know, Michael's just like superstar. Like, you know, if you know, it wouldn't have mattered, but but it, it mattered to us, of course, and it, it always it always it always matters. So, um, ironically, of course. Um, you know, who happens to be in L.A. that week, but Joe Pugliese at home in L.A. And he's uh, shooting up in the Hollywood Hills and he's shooting for People magazine. And at the time, the photo director was a, it is and was a dear friend, Katrina Nielon. And um, they were shooting at Blake Shelton for Sexiest Man Alive. Uh, oh. and, and, and we were invited to the set. Oh, that is crazy. So here we are on set. 
Who was the sexiest man alive on that? Blake on that? That, that, oh. That my dad didn't even know who he was. I barely knew yeah, who he yeah. was. But um, anyway, the shoe with Blake Shelton was wah, wah, and, you know, and then anyway, we show up. So, um, so yeah, so my dad got the full Joe uh, treatment again, this time on location in the, in the Hollywood Hills. Oh, that is crazy. See, that's wow. Jack Joe, he's a talent. He's a talent. Absolutely. So, you know, for students, I think you'll find this fascinating, right? So we are seeing now, I've got my on-camera flash. You see Joe's got a fancy Hasselblad there. And, and you know, because there's no one really listening, right? So the, the guys in the foreground aren't doing it. It's just for, it's just for show. But the Octobank in the back, that's doing all the work. Right. And that's what it's doing. Wow. But what I'm doing is that. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> so, Joe, me. Joe. It is me. great. So, you, you know, the, the, and also the thing too about, you know, if going this route, there's no hiding. You know, when you've just got a flash, it's like, you know, there's no creating that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, you can't, yeah. but you know what I mean, the on camera thing. So, so, um, but look at that, you know, and, and then there's this, you know, but, <laughs> and then there's that, and then there's this. Oh, man. Oh, yeah, I know, right? Wow. So, you know, it is kind of fascinating how you would put two photographers with the same subject in the same space, you know? Oh, yeah. Anyway, so yeah, so we, so we, yeah, so we did all, you know, the great thing was that now we just did tourist shit, you know, which was great. Here he is with Quentin Tarantino. Oh, this is great. So we went to Madame Tussauds. And again, you know, the great thing was because they, you know, it's just made to, to take photographs or selfies. It's right. you know, E.T. Marilyn Monroe. So did he, your dad want to see the photos or was it more just the experience of making them with you? Um, well, we, po we he, he, he was not involved in the edit process, no. Um, but he would see the postings. You know, like he'd be, you know, he'd be on the, he'd be on the phone. He'd be on the phone. Yeah. Probably liking himself. Yeah. <laughs> but I think it was also more the reaction he was getting from people, you know, like he, again, right. you know. That, uh, that says Dad Hetherington on the on the on the star there. Wait, you guys set that up? <laughs> oh, that's great. So we're back to circle of life. This is how crazy things can get. So that's Joseph Strick again, who you'll remember from earlier, um, big time director. This is my dad with David Strick, who is Joseph's son. David Strick was the preeminent onset Hollywood photographer for many, many years. Like he was absolutely, he, he was the guy. He he uh, had a column in LA Times and a call and, and a monthly feature in Premiere Magazine, which is a movie magazine. He was the onset photographer, and the absolutely. work was really. I would encourage you guys to look him up. Just like he, like, like, uh, just amazing, amazing. So you have to remember that David would have been on the set with his dad, with my dad back in the day, because he spent the summer in Ireland when they were filming Portrait of an Artist. My dad hadn't seen him in 50 years, 40, 50 years. So here I am taking my dad to sets. And I had, I had met David, we'd got in touch and I'd met him in LA actually previously because of the connection between our fathers. And here I am able to reintroduce my dad to David maybe 40 years after they last met. That's wild. Um, wrap, your, I think wrap your head around that one. That is crazy, crazy, crazy. The, I think David came to the lecture today, curiously enough. Ah, David, are you there? I hope he's there. So we had the most wonderful time. Um, just, I can't, I can't, I can't even, you know, I, and David's dad, Joe had died maybe a year or two before my dad had, he, he was living in Paris and my dad had kept in touch with him throughout, um, you know, after their, after their, um, after they worked together. Wow. Wow. That is a great story. So again, it's, it's, it's like the magic, the, you know, I, yeah. I mean, the best seat in the house is, 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 you know, 
like I'm privy to the best seat in the house as a photographer. And then in life, I like photography has has um, has help me out, GA. I mean, it's just, it's, it, you can't, I, I couldn't, again, as a kid, how could you fucking even think, you know, like you're going to be in LA with your dad, you know, hanging out with David Strick, you know? Connecting these dots. Oh yeah, yeah. it's otherworldly for sure. And I have all the video footage that he shot as well. Wow. So it was also challenging in this shoot because it was it was super fucking hot in LA when we were there. And I saw all these photographs and we were driving around. I'm like, I had to let them go. Mm -hmm. because it was just, it was gonna be, it was physically draining. You know, and, and I, again, you know, I mean, he would have been, oh, he's, 70, he's 70. So, you know, you have, I have I, like, you know, I just, I was, I was taking care of, <laughs> care of him. You know, it was like, it was like, I didn't want, of course, he didn't want to be like, oh, come on, dad, let's go here and there. So, you know, there are regrets. I mean, I try to have no regrets, as we've said earlier, but, but yeah, of course you're like, but I, I, I knew going into that shoot that I would have to let things go. Yeah. And not force them. That it would just be too much. Uh, one of our favorite days is we visited the Paramount lot, um, and and I just I just bought tour tickets. We didn't get any preferential treatment or anything, but um, I'd photographed some commercials on the lot before, and it's my favorite lot because it really feels like old time Hollywood, like right. studios. It's it's really terrific. So so we did the, the the gold tour or whatever, which gave you a little more access to to. Uh, but of course, you know, you're, 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 you have a minder <laughs> and we didn't want to give too much away um, again, because I technically had a client, you know, in double ARP. So what were, you know, what was I, was, was I breaking all the paramount rules here somehow? So we, you know, we kind of kept to ourselves, but again, we, you know, it's kind of tricky because there's, there's 10 other people with us. You're like, can you get the fuck out of the way, please? <laughs> while we, while we yeah. take, while we take our photo. And, and I, again, you know, I just like, it's, it's being in situations where you get inspired by stuff. I had no idea about this photograph till we all got on this golf cart. And I'm like, oh, fuck, we need a golf cart shot where he's driving the golf cart. Um, and I said it to our guide. I said, hey, listen, you know, any chance, you know, my dad's here from Ireland. Da, 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 da. And he said, sure. Um, the irony is, like, behind, about 200 yards behind us and to the right was the most just best set background ever, you know, lights and set, you know, like the classic, you know, and we end up, and what, you know, what can I say? And, but, you know, I managed to frame it in such a way that, you know, you still get the sense of the lot that he's driving, but all behind us is the 10 other people and who, who just wanted to barge through that door to where we're visiting. You're like, can you just hold, can you just hold on a second? So, so a, a lot of, a lot of, you know, like, again, let's say going into something like this, it's the idea the hat and the glasses, but then it's keeping my eyes open just for every, everything and anything else. Um, so at Paramount, they have a, they have, and they probably don't use it so much, but they have a giant pool, which doubles as a car park. And that's a, that's a screen behind. They can, they can paint whatever, ever they want on it. And, and I was, I, I did know because I'd been on the lot before that this existed. Um, and, and, and we were going to lunch and I just remember saying, the guy, can you stop like real, real quick for a minute? Can we get out and take a, take a picture? So I have one real regret about this picture is that I didn't back him up so that he's just standing in the blue. You know what I mean? So his head oh, is that framing thing. Yeah. yeah. So, so his, so his head isn't with the, can, can, I mean, that it just would have been so, I mean, I'm sure I could photo, but you know, but I, I don't Photoshop, but you know what I mean? So, but we literally like, everyone's like, you know, what the, yeah, like it's a fucking, you know, like, but um, hey, you guys got so much on this trip. It's so many, so so many. Oh, oh, oh. So uh, and you know we 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 did things and it was like also you know to get out you know to to get, be in the air conditioning. So we went to the the Broad, or the, the Bro It's not the Broad. It's the Broad uh, Contemporary Art Museum. Um, and the nice thing about that was, I mean, of course, all pre COVID is that you had to book tickets in advance, so it wasn't super busy, which was which was nice. But the irony then, of course, is that he just had this knack, uh, like like this knack of wearing the right clothes every day. You know, it just all seemed to kind of work. You know, oh, that's great. So, you know, when we were there, of course, you know, everyone, 
you know, is taking a picture of him like that I'm taking because it's just too good. It's just too good to be true, you know, right. which we had no absolutely no problem with. These these were done without a flash, obviously, because it wasn't allowed. But yeah. Oh, they fit in perfectly, though. So this this turns out this was his this is not my this was his favorite photograph from the whole shoot. Oh, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, I think, you know, I think because of, you know, it's it's probably because of the ambient light being the cinematographer, you know, as opposed to the, the flash, you know. Yeah, you could appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. So again, you know, like, like, this is a famous image of Faye Dunaway um, the morning after she won her Oscar at the uh, Beverly Hills Hotel. And her husband or boyfriend at the time was a famous English photographer called Terry O'Neill. Um, so again, getting back to earlier, um, Tim, I would have been brought up on David Bailey, Terence Donovan, Terry O'Neill, who were the, who like prior to, that's who, like my photographic education happened in photographic magazines. And it would have been a magazine like Practical Photography if you'd had it here. But these guys were, you know, they were the portrait and fashion, like royalty, so to speak. So I have always remembered this shot and it's just, it's just a great fucking, it's just a fucking great shot. Oh, yeah. Everything I love. It's like a moment, but yet they've composed it. Obviously they've had the props, they've, they've finessed yeah. it. Um, so I decided that we should, uh, we should uh, do our own version. So here we are at the uh, Hollywood Roosevelt hotel. There's a tiny, tiny little Oscar there. We picked up at, at, at a gift shop and, and some magazines and, and stuff. Um, so uh, hang on, we have a visitor. Hey, hey again. You want to say hello? Hello, hello. I love that cat. Um, so this was this was uh, early one morning as we were um, as we were about to check out the hotel. And he goes in to get some breakfast as I'm cleaning up the magazines and stuff. And uh, we go sit down, we have breakfast, and I notice this gentleman on the right sitting across from us. And I said to my dad, I said, Oh fuck! That's that's Albert Watson. <laughs> uh, does anyone know who Albert Watson is? Put your hand. Oh up. yeah. Oh uh, yeah. So, uh, just Google Albert Watson if you don't. So um, Albert Watson, uh, another photographer to add to the list then, <laughs> who influenced me. He he is a Scottish photographer, portrait fashion photographer. He's photographed everyone, but he, you know, he's a superb, like technical photographer and his images always influenced me. They were in arena face magazines when I was a teenager. And he actually had a, he had a big fancy studio in New York next to industrial rental studios in the West village. Um, and coming from Ireland, you know, back then, it, this was like, like I, again, like you, you couldn't really fathom that, that like, you know, he was a rock star to me and he, he I never, I never interviewed for him as an assistant because I just, I just never thought I'd be good enough in a weird way, or I, I don't even know why. But I mean, I, sh I should have. Um, but I think also I was kind of blinded by this, the fashion. I don't, I don't know. That's a whole other. That's a whole other conversation. So I said, that's that's fucking that's Albert Watson over there, and he's got no idea who he is. So I get the phone out and I show him some of his images, and um, and I'm. He was about to have his breakfast. I'm like, you know what? Let's let's wait till he's let's wait till he's finished. I'll go over and say hi, and you know, maybe maybe <laughs> we can take a photograph. Um, so I've been in the same room as Albert many times, like at openings and stuff, and to some of his openings. I know some people who know him, but we we've never we've never met. So I go over and introduce myself, introduce my dad. Say I'm doing this project. He's in town for an opening that night. I, you know, so it turns out like Albert's from Edinburgh. He's about the same age as my dad. My dad had a, had an aunt in Edinburgh when he was growing up and he used to go to spend his summers in Edinburgh. So they knew all the same places. They went to all the same places, the same beaches, the same parks. There's a pretty good chance they might've like crossed each other's paths, but been unaware. Wow. Um, so, so they're having a great conversation. And then I broached the, you know, any, any chance of a photo. And I, 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 I'd figured the photo out in my head while we were sitting across having, having, having breakfast, you know? And of course, dad seems to be wearing the perfect outfit. Albert's in black. So, so here I am, you know, maybe 30 years after seeing Albert's work, photographing Albert Watson with my dad 
And I am directing, <laughs> and I am directing Albert Watson <laughs> and telling him to put his hand on his coffee mug. I mean, you again can't fucking make it up. Can't like it just I mean, what are the chances? It is crazy. So, I mean, this, um, this was this was better than you know meeting Blake Shelton, you know. <laughs> um I remember this photograph and I was wondering if we would know the story behind it. Um the uh that is really wild. Hey, there's some questions that have come in. I'm wondering if you want to take them now. Sure. Uh, let's see. Um, uh, from Garen, he says, it feels like you gave the series and your dad the same energy that you give your commercial work. Did the series feel different to you than the career commercial gigs? Because of that, did you find it especially refreshing or different or did, how did it hit you differently? I, I mean, I've, I've, I've said it before. I mean, I know a commercial job is a commercial job, but I try and approach everything the same way, mm -hmm. to be honest. I mean, yeah. in a weird way, even a commercial job is personal. And I know that's, is that a controversial remark? But I know you, I know, but you know, the, you're still going to have a, re a creative relationship, even if the brief is, is, I don't know, you could, I, I always try to take things somewhere else. I, I don't know. I mean, I feel bad if I do a shitty job. So that means I've taken it personally, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm not, I, yeah, I mean, I, I, would, I would say I would bring it all. Like, again, no regrets. Like, it doesn't, it doesn't matter, you know? Right. Like, again, because I'm putting pressure on myself to deliver something. And right. I, know, I know when I'm in a good place on a shoot is like I am loose and I'm free. You know, like, there is a, there is a feeling. Getting to that point pre-shoot, there is stress, but yeah. if the stress is still there during the shoot, it's not a good shoot. <laughs> right. If no, it's well weird and out of my head, then it's, then it's, you know, then I know I'm good in a weird way. Yeah. Uh, no, that's good. A uh, couple observations here. Um, uh, Trisha Ortiz says the glasses became part of the subject in all these photos. And I think, yeah, that's, that's absolutely true. Um, let's see. Uh, uh, Ofer uh, has an observation. He says, flattening and framing seems to be so much part of these photographs. And I think that sounds accurate. I mean, you are into flattening the space, wouldn't you say? With these photographs, yeah. I mean, I, I, in a weird way, I'm kind of very traditional, you know, in composition. You know, it's very, usually very head on. And I like to have things kind of, you know, yeah. lined up. And and yeah, I mean, I would, I would agree with, yeah. I've never thought of flattening, but yes. Oh yeah, I always thought that was the case. The and, and then flattening or flattening. Yeah, and then a question uh, from Garen as well. Did the series change the way you looked at your everyday life or your dad? Uh, yes, yeah, so we're going to get into that. Ooh, there's more. Okay, there's more, there's more to come. Stand by, folks. <laughs> so you know what I'm wondering? I'm wondering if we should have a break now. Well, I tell you what. Let me let me let me see where we're at. Let me let me, okay. let me see what's next. So so you know we we stay of course we stay at the standard hotel and and we went to Palm Springs then after L A went on a bit of a road trip and you know and and of course there was a DJ playing in the bar and you know you're like hey I'm with my dad do you mind if you get out of the way we <laughs> we and of course he was wearing the perfect white shirt like you know if he was wearing the black yeah. shirt that night wouldn't have uh, wouldn't have happened and. Um, and you know they have these like funky robes at the at the standard and um um the next morning my dad was not a morning person i'd be like you got to get up the light is just spectacular you know you got to get up so he got up and and i just kind of knew that there was a shot of course there was a there was a, 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 a unicorn in the pool but it wouldn't stay still it kept like floating around like i was like fuck the unicorn um but there was a young couple there like hipster tattooed like head to toe and they were like, hey, you know, do, would you like us to hold the unicorn? <laughs> unicorn? So, you know, you just couldn't, you know, again, it's just like, you know, hey, it's my dad and we're, you know, it, no one can ever say no, you know, and you kind of. Right. Um, and then we went to uh, Joshua Tree. And again, regret here was that we kind of, we didn't have much time here. We were going on to Las Vegas and and he really loved it there I, again, first time. And I wish we'd spent the day there. I wish we'd had kind of two nights in Palm Springs. And I thought I thought Vegas was going to deliver us more photos than it did. Mm. I kind of think Vegas, and then it's just going to be crazy. But you know, also you know, then you realize, well, you know, 
you're going to park the car 10 miles from the hotel room because of they're just so fucking big. And it became a physical challenge because we couldn't yeah. just roll up to take a photo. And, right. and, you know, again, it was, you know, hot as hell. And, um, So I'm going to leave you. Can we try the little? I think there's. I think it's a video next. Let's try this. Let's see if this works. Good morning, Jet. How's it going? Hi. Good morning. How are you? I'm very well this morning, and looking forward to another day's adventures in Los Angeles. Um, so yeah, we did, uh, when we got back to New York, um, we had a little night where we invited people along and we, we, we shared stories and, and again, uh, Michael from WARP was the moderator and it was just a really nice way to like, so obviously a lot of my friends and people had met him, um, during the photograph taking, but then there were so many other people that wanted to get to meet him. So we, we put on an event, which, which was quite fun. Oh, that's very cool. That's very cool. So he never got tired of any of this. He was just into it. Uh, physically tired or uh, mentally tired? Both. Like, you're doing something for your career, kind of, and he's just kind of playing along for fun. And I would think at some point those things might shift in their, like, dedication or something um yes i think again i was very aware of that too by not pushing it too hard and keeping it interesting and right. having having the adventure you know like he was one for a, an adventure and we were having like we were really like fucking it like you know again you, you can't imagine like oh i'm taking my dad around you know like we're, we're just taking some photo i'm you know it's it's hard to fathom. I mean, listen, there's days too when you're like, you know, you got nothing to fucking talk about. You know? Right, right. Ten hours right. in the car. Good, yeah, what are we gonna? <laughs> yeah. Um, but what helped was the the adventure and the like. You know, what are we gonna? You know, like like where my dad's standing out of the the roof and Joshua Tree. Like like that was physically challenging for him. Yeah. You know, and and you know and uh, maybe i push it but he got it and he, wa he wanted to he wanted to do it because he wanted to, again he wanted to like you know but but that's the re see the regret then is that we didn't spend time in joshua tree let's say you know right so so just for him just not even to take photographs just to drive just to drive around you know for the experience yeah, yeah the human yeah. experience and, and the adventure yeah, yeah. yeah. andrew I, first of all thank you so much oh, my pleasure this is a great, fantastic presentation. Um, what I really admire is your eye and how when you compose an image in looking at the ones you showed us today of the documentary, well, I know it's not documentary to you, but the project that you did of your dad, um, you seem to compose an image with nothing more, nothing less. Like everything in the image is interesting and it's necessary what do you look for? How do you find these spots? Because you could choose, just like when you discuss the Hollywood alley where you put him in the golf cart, you chose that specific location and not somewhere else. What goes through your head when you're well, thinking- Well, that, that, lo that location was chosen for me. And in, in that case, oh, okay. I, would, I, okay. I would have backed the cart up if it was possible. Okay. Um, but again, it's like, it's like working with what you've got. And, and I try to tell a story with the environment. 
you know, like I'm looking for things to, so it's not just him. So in that case, he's on the, you know, I want to establish to anyone that it's definitely on a California, like on a Hollywood soundstage in, in that case. But, you know, what I do fight a lot is, is my composition is very kind of traditional, maybe not traditional, right? It's very symmetrical and very straightforward. And I love when I see photographers like approach from different angles, like, fuck, like, why, why can't I do that? You know, and I try, you know, really hard. I'm trying harder these days to, to, to get away from, from that. I think part of it has to do with, with, with a direct flash where it helps to have a background in some cases for the subject. And then again, depending on what is in the background, it helps to help tell the story, so to speak. But I, I mean, he's pretty much in the fucking middle of every, <laughs> every frame. <laughs> I mean, but, but she, you know, if you, as a lesson, I think it's kind of wonderful if you look at the pictures that Joe Pog took and the pictures that I took in the same location and you just see what lighting can do, you know? Like, like again, like on camera flash, boom, there's, there's no hiding nothing, like nothing. Right. And then with Joe, he's created this mood and this vibe. And you're like, wow, like how does he, how does he do that? <laughs> even, yeah. though you, even though you can see how he's done it, you know, I mean, the thing too, is that if you, you know, you and I, any of us could show up on the same shot to take the same shot of the same person in the same situation with exactly the same equipment. And the same one, and it will look different. It will just look different for whatever, like there's just, you know, you won't replicate it quite in the same way. Maybe, maybe the interaction with the subject, maybe your approach, but I just, yeah, I just, I, I think, I hope, like, again, for me, I'm like, God, I wish I could take the pictures that Joe takes, you know, cause it's like, you know, you're, you're always like, I don't know, you're just insecure in your own, I've got better, but you're insecure in what you do. But I think that's good too, because then you just don't take it for granted. That, oh yeah. Am I making any sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, I mean, I know what she's saying though. There is like an efficiency to your images where there's no, only what's in there is important. Right. There's no, it isn't like, oh, here's a random street cone that doesn't add anything to the picture. And there's not like, oh, a, a stop sign that confuses the issue or anything. And I do think that students a lot of times like, the image in their head is very different than what they can actually make with the camera, you know, in the, in the early part of their career. Right. You, know? you lost me. Oh, you lost my screen. Sorry. I'm just having a, I'm having a moment here. Technical moment. It's fine. Yeah. Take your time. Thanks. I don't, I don't want to show off. I see. I'm trying not to show off my desktop because it's, it's a mess. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll get back. Okay. So how do I get to share? So play, play, play. And then we go to, sorry. Uh, no, I need to exit. Share screen. You guys got me? Share, share. Okay. We got you and it's sharing screen. Yep. <laughs> All right. Um, so I, I cheers everybody. I poured myself a cocktail on a Groni. I hope you don't mind. It's six, whatever it is on the uh, 616 on the West Coast. Oh, yeah. Um, so we're back in New York, uh, my dad and I. Do um, you guys know what the Photo Plus Expo is or was? Any TA, why don't, why don't, you, why don't you tell everybody? Uh, I am not a New Yorker, but I, Photo Plus Expo is a um, big event that used to be in New York and probably will be again, where all the vendors selling th things for the camera camera world are there, but then they also have guest lectures and speakers and things. And so if you're into photography and especially working as a photographer, it is kind of a ground zero type of thing to go to. Is that yeah. accurate? Yeah, once it, it was a, once it was also organized by Photo District News. It was part of there. So it was, it, it was, there was something for everybody, you know, whether you're yeah. an amateur or, and they, you know, they had portfolio reviews and, you know, all sorts of bits and pieces and they had, you know, and, lectures and you know I, I've been fortunate enough to talk a few times and you know you could you could take it or leave it depending if you're into gear definitely but you know it was also a great way to meet meet your peers again you know everyone was doing a lecture or you know there was portfolio reviews so there'd be clients around although I never paid for the portfolio review I just wait outside and say hi and 
<laughs> um, but um, but my dad had always wanted to go, you know, because I'd been going for years and I've been talking, and so he'd always wanted. So what do you know? It just turned out the timing was perfect, and what happened? But hey, Dad, how's it going? Good morning, Andrew. Today we're at the Photo Plus at the Javits Center in New York City. That'll be the Photo Plus Expo. That'll be correct. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so we went around all the boots and stalls and the video and then took some more photos. <laughs> wow. Um, I'm, I mean, I'm fortunate enough to because I knew some of the photographers and, and I was actually giving, um, I'm not sure what slides coming next, but I was, I was giving a, a talk as well. Uh, I, well, I was, I was um, uh, moderating a panel and, um, and, and he was there to, to uh, you know, to witness it. So That's again, awesome. you know, it was like at this stage, he's you know, beyond famous. So, you know, he's, he's, he's getting stopped. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> so that's the great Luis Mendez. Um, yeah. Uh, who's a, a legend icon I, I i don't i mean he's a photographer is, is he a would you say street photographer not really no a portrait photographer yeah um, in new york and he takes portraits on polaroid um and uh you can sit and pay for your polaroid to be taken by him and he, he's uh he's, he's 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 quite a character uh i i had to kind of frame this picture up so i could get them both in so this is this is not this is this is based on Actual, <laughs> it wouldn't be that close. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, okay. So this was the end of Dadcation Two. This was 2017, um, and then you know you're kind of we're kind of like you know what's what's next? Um, you know, Dadcation Three, and where would that be, and what would it be? And there was you know we we definitely wanted to do it again because it'd be kind of become a thing and our thing and. And we discussed doing it in Ireland, maybe. Um, I'd, I'd, found, I'd, I'd found that idea a little challenging because I was like, oh, I kind of want to go somewhere exotic, but then Ireland's very exotic. And I was kind of just, I didn't know what it was. You know, I kind of hadn't got it. I, I knew once we got there or once we got, we, once we got like, what's the angle this time? Probably would have been coming home, but, but we, so, so uh, Dedication 3 didn't kind of happen instantly. Um, it was my 50th birthday and my father, we were in Spain and my father fell ill. And he, uh, he had a, a, a subdural um, hematoma, which is basically bleeding, bleeding on the brain. So we got him back from Spain to Ireland and I wasn't supposed to return to Ireland, but I, I got to Ireland. So this is a picture of my father in hospital with his um, head basically cut open. Yeah. Um, no one has seen this before, um, I don't think. Um, but um, so we're, you know, like, like there is a, what well, you, you might ask, why did I take this picture? I just felt compelled. Like it, it's not the dadcation pictures. Maybe it's the, maybe it's the picture that would have been another project. You know, like maybe it's that other project that I didn't want to take. But again, I think the phone just, just makes it easier to kind of just, just make some images. Maybe it's more of a, to remember, um, so we got, he, he, my brother, Richard took him back to, like, we all, we got him back to Ireland in the nick of time. Let's just put it that way. And he, and he, and he made it, he made it through, um, like on fucking, on fucking real, like total, you know, um, unbelievable. So this is him a couple of days later, <laughs> having a cup of tea. Um, and I, I, I wasn't supposed to go back to Ireland, but things were a little touch and go for a while. So, um, so I, I went, I went back from Spain and. Um, so I have two brothers, Richard, who I've talked about, and Colin, and my mom passed away um, like 26 years ago, 28 years ago, 29 years ago, mm. a long time ago. Um, my dad has a partner. Um, but um, yeah, so, so, um, so that, was, that was a tough one. Um, but, you know, it's, it's like, you know, it's, it's like, again, life is just kind of, kind of, kind of wacky and crazy. And when it's, when it's good, it's good. And when it's bad, it's bad, obviously. But, um, 
So this is two days after I took that photograph of my dad on his porch. This is me back in New York City, and this is the comedian and actor, John Cleese um, of Faulty Terrors and Monty Python fame. And this ironically is, was for Michael Wichita, a double ARP again. Um, and I'm just gonna switch gears a little bit um, um, and just tell you about this, just, just to change things a, a touch. Um, so again, circle of life. Um, if any of you guys are familiar with Faulty Towers, I watched it as a kid. Oh yeah. Um, then he was in Fish Call Wanda and the, the Pythons. Who would have thought as a child in Ireland that 40 years later, I would be in New York City. You, you, again, there's no fucking way. Absolutely no fucking way. So, um, so I'm literally getting on the plane in Dublin to come back to New York. I, I see an email from Michael. He's like, are you available tomorrow at noon to show, photograph John Cleese on the upper west side i go sure uh, i can do it um i also like needed the money at this stage because i had a week in ireland that you know it's like okay let me let me i'm gonna touch down at two o'clock new york time let me i'll figure it out i sent out yeah. some texts to assistants to see if anyone was around so that when i touch down at least i you know i'd have something um and um and the, you know got in got my crew together there was no time to do a scout or anything and and I literally woke up that morning and it was pissing rain. Like we knew in the forecast it was gonna be raining and um, the magazine had tried to book a room in the hotel or anything just for, for cover and there was nothing available. And we're like, fuck, like maybe just shoot them under the awning or, you know, like, like it's just fucking. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So again, with the jet lag, I woke up super early that morning and I'm like, I just had this idea. I'm like rubber ducks, rubber ducks in the rain like fucking rubber ducks, John Cleese, rubber duck, you know, the classic Englishman in the rain umbrella. No, 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 rubber, rubber ducks. Yeah. But then it's like, it's eight o'clock on a Wednesday. Like, what are you, are you going to get fucking rubber, <laughs> rubber ducks? Um, and um, so I, I kind of call around some of the drugstores and, and I, I live in Manhattan and nothing. And, and I'm like, fuck, you know, like, I'm like, you know what? I got to let this idea go. I'll, I'll use it some other time. Um, so I have a couple of assistants and, and I had located the ducks, but the, I had located ducks at a bed, bath and beyond, um, on the upper East side. And, um, but I was like, there's no way, like the timing, I've got to be the, be at the hotel, like ready to go at 12, like this is or 11, but there was just no way the timing was going to work and it was raining. So we all get in an Uber and ironically, the, the driver goes up the East side of Manhattan as opposed to the West side. Don't ask me why it was, wasn't even shown. It was the quickest way. And I literally, I can't get the idea out of my head of the ducks. And I call the store and say, what have you got? And the guy says, we got this, this, and this. I said, okay, hold on to them. And I let one of the assistants out and I said, go get the ducks and just as fast as you fucking can. Um, and I said, get some bread too, like some Wonder Bread, get some bread, like he's feeding the ducks. It was all just happening. Yeah. And, you know, and if you make it, you make it. If you don't, you don't. Yeah. So, um, so I get to the hotel. There's no sign of John. We were supposed to meet him in the lobby. I think I called Michael or texted Michael. He said, "Give you know, call the number we've been given." So I call the number, and expecting an assistant to pick up, but oh no, it's John Cleese who picks up, and the voice. You know, it's like this voice, yeah. you know, that that I've heard throughout my life, various moments, and and you're like, oh fuck, it's John Cleese on the fucking. Phone. He said, "Yeah, I'll be, I'll be, I'm running late. I'll be there in a few minutes." So I've, I've run around kind of scouted some locations and I find this like pool of water and the rain starts to die off a little bit and John shows up and I, excuse me, I explain the idea and he's into it. He's like, gets it, he's into it. And I'm like, fucking great. So we, we get to the spot and, and this car had backed up into the spot, but it actually looked great because it was like the gray car. And, um, and he's wearing the blue. And I had the, the bread as well. The assistant made it back with the ducks and the bread. And I said, oh, how about feeding the ducks the bread? He says, no bread. <laughs> he said, no bread. I said, oh man, but he said, he said, it's too much. He said, it's just the ducks. And um, um, I'm like, okay. He says, I'm not gonna look at the camera. I go, okay. And I had been warned, of course. I mean, this is something, you know, you've all heard it and Tim knows about it. Is, you know, how long do you have with a celebrity? I think we were going to have 10, 15 minutes and that included the time, you know, and I had been warned. He hates to have his photograph taken, of course. Why do they always agree to it? <laughs> but yeah. Um, and we kind of we kind of hit it off in a in a in you know as well as we could because I did tell him 
what I just told you. Who would have thought as a kid watching Faulty Towers that 40 years later we would be, you know, together? Oh, yeah. yeah. So, so we did the shot and um, the ducks are as they are in the water. They were, I mean, I could have fucking put them in and post, but I just, you know, I don't know. Like, so, so that's real. And the, and the car works out great. I kind of really like the car because it's kind of just, you know, it wouldn't, it's nice that it's a whatever it is. What is it? A vaudeville or something. But, um, and it turns out we were dressed similarly that day as well. And yes, he has his finger in my ear. And no, I haven't watched it since. So that was, uh, <laughs> so it's a, bit, it's a bit, this one, this one, this one. So the sneakers were his? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. That's good. Um, and my dad, my dad had a delicious sense of humor too. So he, he was a big Monty Python fan as well. So it was like, oh, you know, hey, by the way, you know. Yeah. 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 So uh, changing tack a little bit. This is my uh, brother Richard's uh, bathroom in his house in Dublin. Um, and those pictures on the wall, um, when the house was being renovated, he did a series of pictures of the builder's lunch as, as you can see, very, 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 very healthy. This one has bosoms, uh, tea, uh, sugar, um, uh, what's that, toothpaste, uh, some seven up it looks like, and maybe some, so as you can see, real, real <laughs> classic. Irish and I've I've always or he calls it the builder's diet. I've always loved these pictures. You know, I've always just like every time I go in the bathroom, I'm like, they're, they're just fucking great, you know. Oh yeah. It's like repetitive series, you know, like in a in a way. Like uh I mean it's not remember TA that I when I did a room with the view, that was like another oh, yeah. Thing. I've always like I've, I've so that was that was another hit. Um, yeah. um so I, I've I, so I've always I've always liked this. So my brother Richard is uh, works in sound on TV and movies and stuff, and and we he will send us pictures of his lunch, um, or food, and we've always kind of had this thing fam on our family WhatsApp. Um, so um, in April, my dad wasn't feeling so well and had to go into had to go into hospital. Ireland was very much in um, COVID lockdown, um, has been like it's it's really hardcore compared to here. Um, so he couldn't have any visitors in on the ward and whatnot. So, so, you know, he would, he would start, send, he started sending us pictures of his lunch as he did. And he would write a little, little comment. Uh, so I, I just screen grabbed it so you can kind of get a sense of his sense of humor and everything was scored out of 10. You see, even my brother would. Score oh, yeah. it. So, so uh, portions getting smaller, no harm, tasteless 3.5. Looks edible, but not a one. I mean, you can see there's a, there's definitely a, there's definitely a, he's got a nice bit of composition, and there's definitely yeah. like a color palette here. Beef and mushroom pie. This was a three. Cheese omelet and chips. The tomato was tasty. He gave it a four. Cold uh, cold fish cake, carrots and mash for a three. New color, white. Got a three. Menu said lamb, but not convinced. That was a five. That was April the 25th. Um, all nurses and medics arrived at the same time as tea. Uh, we call dinner tea in Ireland, if just in case you're wondering. Uh, cold turkey mushroom pie. Looked very nice, but cold when I got to it. Saved by the yogurt. He did love a yogurt. That was a five. Uh, steak and mushroom pie, 5.5. His appetite was back. Uh, so he was diagnosed with a non-Hodgkin's lymphoma and um, had to go on, start undergoing chemotherapy. Um, so, uh, so yeah, that, uh, he, there we go. He, he enjoyed the tomato again. Um, so here's, uh, this is my dad on the left, Stuart, without the glasses. This is my brother Richard on the right, my brother Colin on the left, that's me on the bottom right. Um, no one could visit him. Um, I was here, he was there in hospital. Um, he was in the hematology ward. So um, no visitors allowed. So we, 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 we kept in touch and, and you know, had some laughs. Um, but things took a sudden turn, and um, let me see. Uh, four day, four days after that, this is us. Um, mm. I made it back to Dublin. Um, thankfully, um, he's in the ICU. Um, I wake him up, and um, you can't really see. But uh, the first thing he says before I take the picture is, "How's my hair?" Um, and, you know, again, you might ask why I felt I needed to take pictures, but I did. And I've had a, 
I've had a rough, uh, I moved to Atlanta from New York at the start of COVID and wasn't, haven't really been feeling creative. Um, it's been a challenging time for all of us. Um, but I felt compelled to take pictures at this moment in time. Um, of course, I had to take the uh, breakfast shot. Oh, yeah. Um, but then things went downhill rapidly. Um, and again, I felt like I needed to take pictures. So uh, his, we were all in the room with him. Right till the very end. Oh, man. So this is uh, Wednesday, May the 17th, uh, 2021. Oh, wow. It was very fast. Yeah. So, um, uh, you know, again, I was very fortunate to be there. Um, luckily enough, I could, you know, I was allowed at the ICU. We were all there. Um, it's, uh, yeah, I mean, COVID has just kind of fucked, made things so much more complicated. Um, this is a picture, obviously, that Joe took of us. Um, we had to put a funeral together then. Um, and it was decided, we all decided that we, we were going to do a mass booklet um, and that, um, you know, we should put his, his photograph on it. But we decided that it should be one of Joe's photos. Mm. And this is, the, this is the front of the, uh, the mass book and the back. Wow. And wow. Here it is. That's beautiful. Totally beautiful. Uh, I did wow. ask. I did ask for permission. <laughs> um, but um, but yeah, it just it just seemed everything just seemed right. Um, yeah. Wow, that is beautiful. Um, so we had the mass, and I got to eulogize my father. Um, which was probably, I don't know, the proudest moment, one of the proudest moments of my life. My picture is on the screen in the church. Um, at the, you know, Ireland, again, it was limited. We were limited to 50 people in the church and they all had to be invited. So it was oh. kind, of a, kind of a complicated situation. But um, again, we all agreed that we, so the picture in the church is actually, I, did I, sh I didn't, sh it's the one on the invite to the, to yeah, the it's on the poster for the, um, so that wow. was us, we were, we were at a, we were at a movie um, up in Canada as part of Dadcation One, and he always had to look at the end credits, he always wanted to see who the camera operator was, who the director oh, yeah. was, so we, he was always the last one in, so that was a picture of him um, looking, you know, I mean, we faked it, obviously, but um, so the, we decided that that would be the ideal picture for him to be looking out at us. Um, and the, also the, the, the funeral was live streamed, um, because of the limited, um, capacity too. So it, 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 it seemed, uh, it seemed fitting. Right. Right. Wow. So I'm going to just switch tax really quick. Um, uh, this is just a quote that's always struck with me from D David Bowie. I, I didn't know this quote existed until he died. But I, this one has always resonated with me. I, I've never been one for kind of reading, you know, I don't know, how would you put it? Like, like this, that, you know what I'm trying to say. Oh, yeah. yeah, but yeah, this, yeah. This, this, this one, this one I've always felt, felt right for me. Oh, wow. Uh, that's really beautiful. The, uh, no, I had never heard that quote from Bowie before. Yeah, I, yeah, it was kind of one of those things that just popped up after his death. I've never a huge 
Bowie fan, you know, like not a, you know, always respected his music and always respected as a man and and an artist and and would see him from time to time because he lived, used to live like in the you know uh, Soho, just Noho, just uh, close to East Village. So saw yeah. him occasionally, but um, but yeah, I just there was just something I just love that um, I just love that end line, you know, like when you're when you're feel like your feet aren't quite touching the bottom, and and that's it's very true, you know, very true. Oh, for sure. And I think we all find ourselves in it. Oh, Andrew, that was absolutely beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to, I'm going to stop my share now. Do I stop my share now? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Shall I, do that? Ah. Uh, I think I can stop it for you. Okay. The, um, okay. Oh, Andrew, that was beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. And that did not seem easy to dig deep like that. Um, uh, it, it actually was easier maybe than you think if that makes any if that makes if that makes any sense yeah i mean it's 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 um he was an amazing man you know like just really truly like on fucking real you know yeah 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 uh no yeah it brings up a lot of a lot of things the so this all just happened though your dad just died in may correct uh, correct yeah yeah no, it's still raw it's still fresh yeah. Oh, man, uh, that was powerful. And you made something absolutely beautiful out of his work, the um, or about oh, out of that work, you know, um, you know, it's interesting. I mean, I'll open this up to questions and, and we'll, we'll read the comments that people have had. But the one thing that struck me is like there are artists who make work about their own life. You know what I mean? There, there's like, you know, Nan Golden and, you know, like people, Sally Mann, like people have made careers out of this. And your work, I always felt was about you engaging and meeting the other. You know what I mean? Those who weren't you. And I'm just wondering, like this project, which I think resonated with all of us and it definitely resonated with me, but I still think it has all your sensibilities in it. Do you feel you could have done it when you were younger or do you think you needed to be, you know, however old you are now to to kind of be able to see your dad in this way and use your photography in that kind of personal way, as opposed to anthropological way. Um, I couldn't have done it when I was younger. Oh, you don't think so? Absolutely no way. Absolutely no way. Because because if you also just think about like the circles that got closed, just in that project alone. Yeah. Like they wouldn't have been around. They they weren't. You know, twenty years ago, it wouldn't have been the same circle. You know, the fact, yeah. that I, the fact that I'd met David Strick, let's say, yeah. and then brought them together, like, you know, there's, there's little things like that. And I don't think we would have, you, you, you know, it kind of needed Instagram too, you know? That's what really, that's what made it being able to post, that's what made it exciting, you know, initially. It was like the daily posting as well. Oh, a way to share these things and a way to use these things and getting the fast feedback loop and him seeing them. It, and it was less about the feedback. It was more about the challenge of like, you know, we're posting every day. There's, ex there's oh. some expectation, you know, the challenge. Oh, filling what that. Are we, what are we going to do today? How are we going to be, you know, and he would, his mind would, you know, because again, you know, you have to, he's a credibly creative person. So it's not like he's, he's not thinking either, you know? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, for sure. Right. There's a big hole to fill and this is your chance to keep filling it and filling it. Um, the Is this the first time you kind of put this all together? Yes. Yep. Very well done. Very well done. Um, share it more. As many opportunities as you have. Um, hey, let me dig into some of the comments here and then we'll open this up where, where we can actually ask you questions. Um, the, uh, oh my goodness, what do we have here? Um, uh, oh, for Tenenbaum says Roy Kent has to pay for this. Who is Roy Kent? What is is this some inside joke? I don't understand. It was, a, it was not related. Not related. I meant to text it to somebody else. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> you should have just went with it. It was posted during the Faulty Towers, uh, you know, photo. So, um, no, we I like li we like it. this. Okay, fine. It's related to your uh, colorful language. <laughs> so, oh. it's from Ted. The yeah, I told you the students like it when you use the F word. A little color, yeah. Right. I, I was on my best. I was on, I've been on my best behavior uh, so far, by the way. Yeah. Fucking awesome. Uh, comment from over here. The hand is still on top of your hand. He is still your dad there. That picture was heartbreaking and powerful. And that is the ending photo for that project. 
Um, that was beautiful. Um, so that was from Ofer. Uh, Anna Rose says, this body of work is more important than anything. I am sure. Cherish it. Um, and, and I think that echoes everyone's sentiments here. Uh, you were blessed from Trisha. You were blessed to have all those projects with your dad. Um, I think that, like, I mean, how thankful you must be, or I think all of us would be, or we're thinking of what we didn't do with our parents before they died with that. What a cool game of pitch and catch and collaboration um, that, you know, you got to have. Well, not everyone's lucky like that, you know, not everyone has a parent or parents in their lives that, you know, I mean, so it's definitely, yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't, yeah. It's hard, yeah. it's hard to, uh, but, you know, it was, yeah, it was just something that for us, it, it, you know, we got to spend time together. As I said, you know, like all you guys with parents, older parents, it's fucking hard, you know, it's like, yeah. Day two, you're like, what the fuck, you know, and they've got to eat at a certain time. And is it, the, you know, and it's so, yeah, I mean, it was. Well, your dad is so iconic that, um, like, I wouldn't have <clears throat> to even take photos of, you know, my, my, my dad passed away, but like, I could relate to it, even if it's not my dad, because he's mm -hmm. just like a dad figure with the hat and, and his glasses and, and his demeanor and the way he dresses and, you know, all these classic locations. I feel, I feel like a lot of people can relate to that as being with my dad, even though it's your dad. So yeah, yeah. I appreciate it. Oh yeah, no, very universal. You know what I mean? Like it allow, allows all of us in. Um, and I guess about your final quote there, Eddie uh, said, this is a better way of explaining what I'm doing uh, I think pushing that boundary outside of your comfort zone. Beautiful quote. Uh, yeah, absolutely. The um, so I know that everyone has some questions, and there's some questions I skipped over that were more kind of like career oriented and things like that that we'll get to. But I know everybody had a question to ask to uh, ask you that was their homework. Um, why don't you guys kind of share these now while we have a little bit of time? Um, the uh alana do you have anything uh that you worked on i think you brought up something in class um yes but the thing that's at, on my mind right now is something we haven't really talked about that i know other people were interested in hearing about um was your project um i can't remember what the title is but it's the kids with guns we were talking about ah, this right. in our last yeah. class and yeah. we kind of yeah. wanted to hear the maybe backlash you yeah. got or didn't get and the whole story behind that. Sure. So that was a non-for-profit, um, but that was done with a ad agency in New York who, who, uh, so, uh, I mean, a lot of agencies like to obviously do good and they use their services to, you know, where they can uh, support causes that they believe in. Um, and in that particular case, it was the Brady, uh, uh, Brady gun, I I'm sorry, I can't remember exactly, but, um, and I was, a, I, we were approached and there's, there's no money in this. The, the agency are doing it for free. You're doing it for free, but you're actually hoping to get some, some, some good work out of it. But, and it, you know, obviously something I believe in and, and the pitch, I couldn't believe it either when I heard it, like that toddlers with guns kill people and they kill more people. You know, I mean, it was just fucking frightening. And it was, it was actually um, timing wise, it was, we did it the year of the election when Hillary was running against Trump. So what was that 2016? I yeah. Um, and, you know, it, it placed your ego a little bit, right, Tim, when the agency comes, like the fuck, the fuck thing is like, you know, they won't give you a pay in jail. <laughs> but <they're Yeah>. like, <laughs> or Because it's more complicated because you have to pitch it and the whole thing of the client yeah. has to sign off. In this case, you're like, okay, well, you know, you've got the job, you want it, there's no money in it. Um, but they still like, what are your ideas? <laughs> yeah. So, um, and, and it was limited, you know, because the, they have no money. So, you know, I had thought we could shoot it in the suburbs and, you know, like it should feel the suburbs, it sh you know, and cast it. So, so it was shot in an art director's apartment in Brooklyn, <laughs> which was already kind of challenging because it's like a fan, you know, it's like a nice, a stylized apartment doesn't right. look like you know i don't know i mean you have a image in your head where a toddler you know i mean it's Good terrible to say, but um and the the kids were all um 
friends of friends or friends of advertising people. And they had wanted, they wanted us to shoot motion. And that's always, that, that's a challenge. And it is a challenge. Um, and again, it's kind of on you, you know, and, and I was like, you know what? Like the best way to do this is almost is like the stills I kind of knew and they were going to get some, and they rented like fake firearms and stuff. And, and, you know, you're, I always expect people to go above and beyond. Like I go above and beyond, like I will always go above and beyond. Um, so it was, you know, we're going to shoot at this and they got X amount of kids. And um, I kind of figured like, you, you can't see the whole space because the space is the giveaway. Like if they've got to be tighter photos and the flash will do it. Like that was on camera. And then I had a friend shoot the motion. I was like, you know what? You should just shoot it on the phone or shoot it on a like a handheld. So it feels like it's the parents who've taken the yeah. video. Like it does this doesn't need to be perfect. And also just like doesn't become too complicated, <laughs> too complicated, yeah. too, too production heavy. And in that video, they used some pickup stuff of like actual toddlers firing guns. So so yeah, I mean the day of the shoot, um the day of the shoot, like you know, a few guns arrived. It was a little, it was a little disappointing, I have to say. Um, but God, I hope they're not. I hope no one's listening. <laughs> but you know, but we made, again made it work. I mean, I, oh uh, yeah, editorial photography is like the greatest in terms of like problem solving quickly with working with nothing. And that day was draining because you're photographing kids and it was kid after kid, and it's just kids are tough. Like some kids were were fine for twenty minutes somewhere, and. Yeah. And, you know, you're just kind of going with it. And it was exhausting. And there was an agency there and they were client, really. And, they, you know, you're trying to trying to make sure they're happy. Um, I knew we were making good work. But honestly, at the end of the day, I was fucking exhausted. Yeah. I was really exhausted. And then I, I, I think I looked at the, because again, in that case, we would have given a drive to the agency that day and they would just go about and... And I looked at the pictures like maybe a week later. I was like, oh, those are fucking good pictures. Like they're like, like the day was so intense that it, I had to step away for a bit. But I'm like, oh, those are, they, they, they felt real. I should probably, yeah. repro I should probably reprocess them again. Cause I might, I might come at them with a different, slightly different um, processing approach, but just uh, like my processing approach would be on feel, not on, not on like a, you know, just see what worked or not. Right. Um, right. But I was thrilled when that video came out. The video came out like just in time for the first debate, I think, or one of the debates, and it and and it and it came up as a topic. I can't oh, really brought it up, which was like fucking amazing. But I I love the creative, like, like so I grew up with magazines. I I love when the type and the magazine come together. Like I'm not all about the picture, right? You know? I want I want I want to give the art director and the art department and the copywriter something to work with and then they do their thing and then like th then it's a, then it's a finished thing right i don't i don't right. mind having type on my photo if it's like if it works you know so um um in terms of um in terms of that project like it was really great to turn it over and see them do their thing you know right Right. And, 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 and Tim Soder, who was on earlier, he, he, he shot the video and he was, it was, he was great. It was just great. Like we were, you know, we were kind of fighting for fighting for time a little bit too, but, but it was, you know, but it was, it was, I, I was really pleased with that. It, you know, but the irony is it didn't lead to any more, any other work in, in that vein, which is, no. which is the, the reason you do it, you know. <laughs> no, there's always the promise of, we love your work, mm -hmm. have this big thing, but we want you to just kind of yeah. get your feet. And in, and in a weird way, like I figured out how to do it for you, for you. Like, I'm not, I'm not trying to pat myself on the back. Like I'm trying to make, I'm trying to get a result. Like, like, we couldn't like the only way I get a result is if we shoot the video on 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 uh, point shoot. Like there's no way. Like you know. Right. Like there's no way. It's like I just can't. You know. Right. Right. No, that makes sense. Uh, Shane, you had a question here. Do you want to just say it? I just see that came in. Oh uh, yeah. Um. Are there any uh, new projects that you have in line that you're excited about? Yeah. So I didn't share. So, so the one of the amazing things about going back to Ireland, as heartbreaking as it was, it was truly inspiring. Mm. So I shot 
while I was there amongst all this and after my dad died, I started work on like two or three projects. I had ideas. I mean, I, I can't describe it. Um, I, I lived in New York. I lived in Ireland for 25 years. I lived in New York for 25 years. I moved to Atlanta. My wife's job relocated. I moved to Atlanta literally the day before New York City went into lockdown. And I've been, so it's been, a, it's been pretty fucked. And I know everyone's dealt with something, but I've struggled um, greatly with being creative. I, I, cr I created some good work, but not, but nothing, you know, there was no jobs. Um, and, you know, I definitely wondered if my time was up. Not, mm. as, a, not as a working photographer, as a creator, because I had no ideas. I literally oh. couldn't fucking come up with anything. I mean, I did the Halloween project, which was good. And I did a few things, but it wasn't, an, it wasn't like, it was a struggle, you know? Yeah. So I went, when I went back to Ireland, I, um, I, uh, so I, I, you know, I, I took those pictures with the camera phone and my dad and, and I, I, so, you know, the fuck thing is it, like, like the travel to get back there happened really quick. We, we literally, it was a Saturday. I had to get on a plane Sunday with COVID, get tested. And I'm not going to, I was supposed to shoot a big job in Tampa on the Tuesday with a, with a Super Bowl winning quarterback. Just there you go. That's all. Then that all had to. So there's so many things that actually happened on top of everything. Um, and that was going to be my one big job for the year. I'm like, fuck, okay. You know, finally a big job, but that, yeah. didn't matter. that didn't matter at all. But so I just brought my, I just brought the one camera and I didn't even bring a fucking flash. Didn't even bring the flash. And wow. And I shot a lot of stuff and I, and I, it, I, I can't even like it freed something. I, I, part of it's getting back on the plane, traveling again. It just unlocked it. It just unlocked something in me because I've always traveled or gone somewhere. Um, and Ireland has become a magical place for me where, where, where again, I, I do, I do struggle with, you know, familiarity. You know, like 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 sometimes you have to go away to go back to see things in a in a in a in a new way. Um, so I've I I mean I can't tell I've got so many fucking ideas now. It's 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 kind of crazy. Like it's it it unlocked it literally unlocked the like the blockage of like I'm done. Have you considered self portraiture and how do you feel about it? Because I feel like a lot of photographers are like kind of reverting to self-portraiture because of this whole pandemic situation me being one of them uh, I'm, I'm no I'm, I'm not the, I'm not I'm not that good looking I'm not I've no I've no I've no interest <laughs> um yeah I mean you know I mean just whatever you're into you know I mean seriously I mean I know it's like the basic fucking thing but like you know whatever rock whatever rocks your boat just like it takes a while too to just again it took me a long time to figure out what made me happy but again but then i hate it <laughs> you know and so i, I yeah i mean there's, there's no right or wrong I, I think you have to try and make yourself happy first and not you know not but again just keep pushing your, yourself i mean it, you know yeah i i have no interest in self portrait that makes sense hey you know i have a question here but others do too I mean, so do you think creativity is a thing that, that at one point you just run out of? I mean, that's the way you kind of said it. You said like, yeah. I thought of, I thought I, I was run out of, I had run out of creativity in photography. Yeah, I, I couldn't have an idea. I couldn't fucking get, like, I had no ideas. No, maybe being locked up or being like not being out in the world because I react to seeing things, you know, or I drive past something or I get an idea or... Like if you go on my Instagram, I'm not going to share my screen, but if you go, um, um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm starting to share some of the projects on the Instagram. There's a project called Palm Dublin, Palm Dublin, as you would say, that resonates. I, there, I'm a big cyclist and I'm starting to shoot at a track here just mm -hmm. to meet people and thing. And it's all daylight and I'm really fucking excited about it. Like it's fucking, like I brought the flash once and turned it on and I'm like, fuck, fuck, fuck the flash. Uh <laughs> um, I think I'm, and, and again, I'm trying not to be so, so like straight up in a weird way. Yeah. <laughs> like, like I'm trying to I'm, maybe, yeah. I mean, I'm trying to just be a better photographer, maybe. Right. Like, I don't, I, I don't know, but like, I thought I was done. 
Well, you know, it's interesting because I never thought of you as the type of person who sat there and came up with an idea. I thought you were the reacting photographer. Someone would throw a throw a story to you and then you'd figure out an idea. Like, so when you said like, I didn't have any ideas, I never thought you'd be sitting there coming up with an idea. You know what I mean? I thought you were we're more of the- coming up, We're always trying to come up with ideas though. You know, like, like again, not everyone's a winner, you know? Like- well, Oh, true, true, true. You know, like, but, but then in COVID when you're not, and, and again, like editorial photography is like, you know, I don't, you know, the last few years, even pre-COVID are, had been tough. So, yeah, you know, and I thrived on assignments, but, but you see that the other thing was, it wasn't just the assignment, it was driving to the assignment. Maybe I saw something, maybe I met someone that had nothing to do with the assignment on the, you know, I mean, you, it just opened up like you're seeing shit and meeting people. You're out in the world. Yeah. You're, out in the, you're out in the world. So yeah. in a weird way, even though Atlanta's new and I should be really excited about it, getting on the plane, all of a sudden I was out in the world. Even though I was just going back to Ireland, I was back on a fucking plane. Yeah. And it was just magical. Although it was for the most heartbreaking fucking reason, you know? Yeah. Yeah. No, that's well stated right there. Um, uh, Jeffrey, you had a question. Do you want to just say it? Yeah. Uh, how would you um decide which of your personal work to share publicly i know that you mentioned earlier had a photographic community in new york and you would put your photos up and you would get feedback there and that sounds like really quality stuff um but i don't know if you've been able to replicate that community throughout uh, the rest of your life and career um it's it, it's been challenging and it, it, it it's it's also it's it's also i don't mean it it's also age challenging um as one gets older you just like it just gets different you know like people's lives like the great thing was that was a physical thing you know we were in the real space mm -hmm. but now i know that things have like you know obviously obviously things have changed um no one goes to the darkroom anymore but as i am an older person now <laughs> like it's i have different interactions with people and most of them are in around my age so it, it's just a it's it's a different thing like i i do know that there's a there is a whole generation of photographers that are sharing things and i'm not a part of it with each other it's right. just different you know it just it's hard to um like certainly and i don't know where all you guys are you know being in new york helps it helps because there is a community there's a big community and you know like like, like there will be and the community won't necessarily overlap either but there you can have physical you know, there, there, you can go to gallery openings or, you, can, you know, there are, there's like the photo fucking expo, like there's things you can actually go to and meet people. And, and um, so, yeah, I, I can't even remember the question, but um, oh, I had to figure out how to share stuff. I mean, if it's good, if it's, I'll share it, I'll show you, I, 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 I won't. <laughs> I mean, and it's, I mean, it's terrible, but you do kind of have to curate, you know? I mean, yeah, I guess you I, do. I mean, yeah, I was curious how much you're following your own inner compass versus how much you're you're taking in feedback and, and receiving uh, that and then saying, okay, I mean, what, the, yeah, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be getting so much feedback. I think I think if it's I think I know if it's worth sharing. If the story is good. Um, I mean, to, you guys won't know, but Tim will remember I used to write a blog way back when blogs were a thing and we both wrote photo blogs and and that was that was a community. I mean, that was that was kind of the community after like the physical, like that was the switch to digital when you didn't meet people at a lab. Um, and, and again, you know, like I also, I also knew when it, um, when it kind of ran its course as well too, you know, time, time, time to get out. But, but that was that, like, I've tried to learn stuff and that was a total learning stuff from someone who was like, you know, a little older, not like super ancient, but I don't know. Um, but I think too, is like, you don't know like what's going to happen you don't know where all you guys are going to end up like some of you got like you're not all going to be photographers i hate to break it to you like or, or make a living but you someone might become an art director or so, like you just don't fucking know and it's like it's this is the network this is where you start with um you know and i know i like do you have physical classes tim or this is all virtual or there was physical? Oh, well before covid it was wonderful and it was uh no it's all in person but then what we're doing now is it's is this you know and we hope to have in-person classes in the spring um 
we're gearing back up into that. But yeah, the set that sense of community when everyone was together was very real at yeah. school. You know? yeah. And I would say these guys are the best of the best. They do form community with what like humans form community, you know what I mean, with whatever they have, you know, and so it takes different forms, you know, I I think, but I would, I think the bigger message, maybe I would kind of add to Jeffrey's thing is I do think at different times in your life, your community does take different forms. And Mm -hmm. you're like, I remember a time myself where the feedback I got from my community dictated probably all my decisions, where as I got older, eh, that became less important. And your own inner compass kind of made the kind of made the calls more, I think, you know. Um, so maturity yeah, has to do still need to have your ego massage, though, right? Uh, I don't know if I, I actually think I'm past the point of someone saying they like something <laughs> they, like I don't know if that does anything to me anymore. I think it, they need, it has to have some insight for me to like, you know, I mean, I like showing work and seeing what people respond to or what they reject. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But I don't know if if it's ego drives it as much as uh, just trying to see what what triggers people. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. The, um, oh, Anna Rose, you had a couple questions. Do you want to uh, engage in a couple of those? Yeah, sure, I'd love to. Um, there's two that I have. Um, you talked in the very beginning about doing personal projects that were editorial. So how would you recommend doing personal projects when editorials definitely meant to support text or to go with text? So how would you recommend doing a personal project if you don't have the text, do you write your own text? Do you partner with a writer or because you're putting this in your portfolio to present it to others? So I was just asking how, that was my first question. How do you do personal projects that are editorial without the text? Uh, 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 well, I mean, if writing has to be a part of it, it should be a part of it, right? If you need to, if it needs to be, I don't know. I, I, I did I, did I set it up like that? I mean, I, <laughs> Definitely, definitely all my, all my, let's just say projects. Let's not say personal projects. Cause again, I, 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 I just have a, I have this thing about the personal thing. Um, if it was text driven, if it did require text, um, I did a project where I photographed all my hotel rooms and the view from the window and that needed an explanation, you know, and, and, and I, I published it in a little book and stuff and, and, and yeah. So uh, like whatever feels right. You know, I mean, if you're, I definitely also, like, I was never a great writer. Uh, I was never very academic, but then when we did blogs, like part of the thing that that happened then was I found out like a voice or like I, I, I was suddenly able to write or not, I mean, it took a while, but- and oh, the helped, writing was great. And yeah. that's helped too commercially because, you know, you've got to write a treatment and stuff and all that sort of thing. So that that's helped. Um, I, I I don't know what to, I mean, again, like like I was a really shy kid. Like, it's like, it's like taking a lot to, you know, like like the advice my mother gave me is like, if you're going to be a photographer, you're going to fucking start talking to people. I mean, that's basically what, you know, and it was like fucking spot on, you know. <laughs> so um, I'm not sure if that's helping, but just go with your gut. Don't don't over. There's no right or wrong. You know, if, if you feel like you need a writer to help, that's great. Sometimes I find, though, they don't like get it, you know, yeah. like and, and Tim, uh, this would be a commercial thing is like, you know, when you've got to do these treatments for commercial jobs, people hire writers and graphic designers. And, and sometimes I feel like, oh, fuck, like I need to have a whole team. Like, I don't, it's just me. I don't have a team. Um, um, I mean, I have an agent and stuff, but, but then sometimes your voice gets lost, you know, like, it's like, cause someone else has written it and it's not you. And, and yeah, so I don't know. I don't know if that's making any sense, but it, it yeah. should, it, it, it definitely should be you, you know, if you are getting someone like, it, if it feels right, it should feel like you. I mean, getting back to like the competition, the question earlier, like New York or whatever, like, well, why am I going to, there's so much amazing talent, like so much people that are just amazing. Why am I going to get a job? And, you know, how am I going to, how am I going to stand out? I think, again, you, you just have to be yourself. And I hope, so hopefully that's through your work and through you that people can relate to. I mean, certainly, you know, back when, way back when, and the Made in Ireland, like, 
when I first moved to New York, I didn't play my Irish thing up because I was kind of embarrassed about it. It was like the nineties. It was just a different, like, you know, we spoke differently or, you know, it was just, you, I was just trying to fit in, you know? And then I realized, well, like that doesn't work because then you're just nothing, like you don't stand out. You're just trying to fit in. And, and certainly when I did that Irish project, I played the fuck up out of that after, you know, like, like, you know, like, like yeah. I, I could tell instantly that I was onto something, you know? Like, again, having experience and being in the business, having some life experience, like, ah, uh, yeah, no, like, like, yeah, I need to, uh, you know, what makes me different might be an accent, might, you know, because again, there's, there's so much talent, you know, Pe people have kind of got to like you to give you a job. Uh, that's well stated. You had another question, Anna Rose? Yeah, so hold on, I'm taking notes on something that you said, but yeah, I agree with you in what makes you different um, is, is really important in this um, time. But, it, but, it's, but it's you what makes you different. So you don't have to overthink it, you know? It's yeah. Like, it's like yeah. we're all different. Or different being way. authentic. Yeah, not trying to be different, but yeah. just being authentic. Yeah. And, and well, authentic is the worst word. I mean, I'm not trying to, because every commercial different. pitch you do now, it's like they ask you to be authentic. It's like, uh, you know, anyway, it's funny. It's just funny. Anyway, but no, just be you. Yeah. Well, okay, my second question was based off of looking at your website before your talk. And so what I was going to ask is, what is your process when you work with commercial clients? So you said you're with an agent, but what do you just do jobs through your agent or do you also pitch jobs yourself? And what is your process as a commercial photographer? Because you are the only uh, commercial photographer we've talked to um, for the class. So I'm curious in what's your process for commercial photography um i have an agent and i look at so my editorial work is separate from my agent some agents like to deal with it some don't it's really financially not worth our while um, for them to concentrate on that i don't want them to take a cut i don't want the billing to go through them um but i again love doing editorial work uh commercial work is challenging um it's been challenging for me i'm trying to figure out like I, I, I've been successful in doing entertainment work, which I really enjoy. Um, like, you know, like, like the pitching process is challenging. The treatment process is challenging. Like, again, it's like, like the, my favorite jobs are the ones where, where you've kind of got the job, if that makes any sense. You don't have to pitch it and you don't have to, and that happens. It happens a lot shooting alongside video and stuff where they're, you know, but um, the process, I'm not the greatest salesman in the world. Um, and it's, 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 it's challenging. Yeah. It's, 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 I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what, I don't want to say because uh, this video I'll go out in public. Right? If they were to stop recording now, <laughs> Maybe maybe Tim would say something that would. <laughs> no, I, I would. I mean, I, I think that the transition from I mean, I know uh, the transition from editorial to commercial or trying to do both. I've never known anyone who can really be great at both. It seems like I mean, have you do you, Andrew? I don't know. But but again, it's like like editorial is out. It's like it's pretty Fox like it's kind of done. Right. Go on. Correct. Tim. <laughs> Correct, but I guess, but I guess I'm referring to the that type of image making. You know what I mean, and that type of problem solving and that genre. You know what I mean of like storytelling through. You yeah, know. but you see that the interesting thing now is that that clients need you to be scrappy because they don't have big budgets and they don't have big crews, and that's where all my experience actually comes into play because True. from editorial, and that's and that's and that's how I market myself, um, especially now. Uh, that's super, every one of you should write that down. No, that's an excellent point. Cause yeah, now they want someone who can do everything and solve the problems and not have and scouting days and all these and things. And be nimble and not use a ton of gear and work with a video crew and all that sort of stuff. And, and that plays into my skill set. And I'm really, actually really happy being put in that. Well, not, when, yeah. I mean, I'm still scared shitless and, you know, having a sleepless night, you know, but, but I, I kind of feel better or will feel better or, uh, I'll just get a better result, maybe. I don't know. But again, it just depends on the commercial, like some of the jobs if the client and the, like it, there's a lot of expectation even. And it's, 
it's it's tough and the the calls and the thing and yeah the whole the whole thing oh the conference call oh the commercial conference call uh well, the nice thing now is because it is zoom you get to see everybody yeah no it's actually because getting it better fucked, it was fucked when you couldn't they were all around the one table and yeah you just you knew they were talking to each other behind you <laughs> yeah i should stop <laughs> no yeah the con yeah the commercial conference call has gotten better in the age of zoom when you can actually like communicate oh, with fantastic. people fantastic yeah 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 no it's infinitely better yeah. um the uh oh so let's kind of you know wrap up if we have any other questions david corey did you have anything and it looks like there's a couple things coming in uh on the chat too do you have anything david i uh The tips and advice it's it's super real real cool um that to kind of um just images that are just kind of real so i appreciate it <laughs> i don't think we got any of that but it did sound positive yeah thank, um, you. thank you david <laughs> yeah yeah we'll thank him for that but it sounded kind of rough uh angie here angie you want to uh share your question Yeah. Um, how do you find your um, assistants and do you use the same ones often? And if you're ever in LA, I'm always available. Well, thank you. If I'm, that, if I'm, if I'm in LA, I'll be calling you. Um, uh, it's nice to have a crew that you can kind of, so, you know, part of the reason for the Made in Ireland project and the way I construct, like the way, the reason it's done the way it is, is that I can work on my own if I need to, and mm -hmm. still still get a still get a a decent result. Um, it's helpful if I have an assistant with, so they can let's say hold the light and the light becomes more interesting. But but a lot of it was that I actually you know for a lot of jobs it's just easier to go on your own if it's long travel and just sometimes it's just it, you know it's always it's, it's always easier to have another pair of hands, but. Sometimes it's boring as all fucking hell and you're sitting around and it's not, you know, it's, it's just easier to do things on your own. As, and if the budget and that is, is, is um, challenging too. And, and that's the way I've always approached it is, is that was what was like you, and it, but it can take a toll like physically as well on me, you know, as one gets older as well. Um, in terms of um, New York, I had a pretty solid crew. I'm in Atlanta now. I've, I've got one or two people. Um, but you know, there was a time too when I I would bring photographer friends, you know, who were doing their own thing as assistants on certain jobs, because there was less assisting and it was more about having someone who had my back on a job or just yeah. you know who could like if the shit went like down or or who you would just have a better time with with going to dinner, or, you know, like like it, there's a lot of there's a lot of things a lot of things in 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 play. Um, but it is helpful when you are like uh, sympathetic with somebody. But oh yeah, the other, the other the other reason I worked the way I worked was and worked the way I work is that I could travel to a city, and if I needed someone, I could get someone, and they didn't have to have any photo experience at mm. all. At all, like just hold the light. Oh, hold you, the light there. Oh, you just needed someone you could tell what to do, and that would yeah, be enough. Exactly. Yeah. 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 It fucking helps. Yeah. But but that's that that was kind of that was also reasoning. It's like if I can't do it on my own, I could just find somebody. Um, right. And you'd still get the same image. You know, the same quality, you know, the same quality of image. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's well stated. Uh no, that's an excellent point. Um uh, Andrew, this has been awesome. Um, I, uh, does anybody else have anything they want to ask Andrew as he's walking out the door? I guess I just was curious about if you could attribute one factor that kept you in this specific field of photography um, your whole life, as in like you're talking about all these different avenues that you could go, but like what kept you with the camera in your hand? Um, again, for, like the camera has opened doors, you know? like just it constantly opens fucking doors it's a reason to be places you know like we wouldn't be on this call if i didn't if i didn't have a camera i would never have met ta i would never have been to ta's house 
you know, like, like it's, it's, it's like, like, again, as I said, like when I figured out the camera would get me into places, you know, like that's it. Um, and I just started a pro project here, like shooting at the bike track and, you know, like I'm interested in the bikes and then, the, but the camera is out, like, is as, like, that gives you a reason to be there. Yeah. And it gives you a reason to like, and then all of a sudden you get on the infield. Like it just, it just, you know, it's, it's, you still got to do good work, but it, it's um, like, you know, I mean, I got frustrated when I, I didn't have any ideas, you know, cause you're like, fuck, like is it's probably, you know, um, it, it might be less about the photographs and more about the experience. And, th and that's something I learned from my dad, you know, um, for sure. Oh, less then, about the photographs, more about the experiences. Yeah, it's all about the experience, yeah. Like, you know, like people will ask me, what's your favorite job, let's say, and I will say it's the next one. Because you just don't, oh, yeah. you know, oh, hopefully there is a next one. But, but you know, it's just like, what's, what is, what's, you know, you, if you're lucky and, and I don't like, I'm really blessed like to be, and I'm not, you know, blessed uh, it, to be, to have seen the things I've seen and to have met the people I've met and, and I'm not, and it's less about celebrity. It's more about just to have those experiences with my dad. If I didn't have a camera, like those experiences wouldn't have happened in that way. And there yeah. would be no record of those experiences and it wouldn't have been shared. And the most important thing for that too, was to share it with family. It wasn't sharing it with, or with his friends, or, you know, you have a, you know, like, or just reconnecting with David Strick. Like it's like fucking unreal, you know? So yeah, those, yeah, those chances to do those things. I, I do believe we have David Strick here, but he, he wow. uh, like, the, like the worst student, he yeah. keeps his camera off. Oh man, David, David, come say hi. Can we summon him from uh, from is the? He mute, I, is, is he muted? He's muted, probably. Is he muted? Uh, he's not even muted. No, he's just like chilling in the in the dark room. I think. <laughs> now he's muted. The, <laughs> he's unmuted. <laughs> yeah, he'll be oh, muted now. Hello, David. <laughs> the uh, now David's one of my favorite photographers ever. Absolutely um yeah he's got you should have him on he's got some great stories and um yeah and 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 yeah and there's some crazy shit too so uh yeah you should have david on next term yeah we should uh if he would turn his camera on i, I can't have him on like this you know <laughs> what i mean the um uh uh garen did that answer your question i know we went off in a tangent there um uh, it did it's super fascinating just to hear uh, about the best seat in the house follow-up um, oh, so, problem. so, you know what? So hang on, I left a part out. So, um, so we were, you know, again, we, my brothers and I spent some, we all had, uh, we all had time with my dad individually and we had time together with him. Um, and, you know, he had been talking about, you know, right up to the end, he was pretty sharp and he had been talking about you know, we were just talking about stuff and, and, and um, you know, saying everything that needed to get said and, and more. And, and um, he'd said that he'd wanted, a, he'd wanted, a, he wanted us to put together a book. And the book was, you know, really for his grandkids um, and, um, you know, about his life and pictures. And, and my sister-in-law was going to do the text and he wanted me to edit the pictures. And I asked him what, um, he would like the book to be called. And he said he would like the book to be called The Best Seat in the House. Oh. <laughs> um, so thank you for, um, thank you for reminding me because I, I neglected to. Um, so that's, so I've had the best seat in the house. He said that, you know, the cameraman always had the best seat in the house and he gave us the best seat in the house. So um, at all times. So thank you for reminding me. Um, that's the reason why it's called the best seat in the house. <laughs>